Hello, hello, hello. There we go. All oh, right. Thank the Lord above. I, what, <laughs> hello, folks. Welcome to 2021. Hey, everybody. Um, welcome to Bards of New York. Uh, we were just, again, we're new to this and we're figuring out all the kinks. And by we, I mean, Dan is figuring out all the stuff for streaming and we will only get better as it, at it as we keep going. So without further ado, uh, this is our first ever session. Uh, if you guys were with us last week, we had our session zero where we just kind of talked about uh, our expectations with the campaign, introduced our characters who we are playing. And for today's episode, we are just going, we are going to be doing a kind of two separate one-on-ones between me and two of my players to kind of get them set up on how the campaign is going to begin with everybody together. So our first person is our wonderful bard, Dan. I'm not a bard. And, <laughs> <I'm>, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. In real life, I'm a bard. Yeah. Uh, but uh, in the game, I'm not. But thank you. I appreciate mm -hmm. it. So uh, do you have anything you'd like? Any? I always begin my sessions with saying, would you like anything you'd like to share, Dan? Anything new going on you want to share with everybody? Um, no. I appreciate everyone and me learning how to do technical things because I am truly flying by the seat of my pants with learning all this stuff. And I have, oh, uh, uh, but um, I'm super excited. And uh, yeah, this is, uh, uh, yes, this is, uh, this is a grand old time. So here we go. All right. Uh, so just to, right before we start, our rules are, uh, respect each other, respect the players, respect the story, and have fun. So that's our, our goals for today. And without further ado, let's want, launch into the world of Cordia. So, Leonidas. The last thing you remember was a bright flash. And you find yourself in this space, the air is damp and electrified. Almost, if you move your arm through it, you can feel the resistance. As you step out, you can feel a, almost like a ripple come, go out between, uh, from under your feet after every step. There's fog obscuring your sight. You just are in this space. Curious. The next thing you feel is heat burning your face. And as you realize that your eyes open and you, they take a moment to adjust. They're heavy, your eyes, um, and a bright sun pushes into your skull and you blink. A smell of ozone stings your nose, that electrified smell adding to your disorientation. You look around and you take in your surroundings and you are at the apex of this dune in this great sand sea. You're half buried in the sand, almost like you either dug yourself down or you hit the sand pretty hard and left a little bit of a crater. You don't remember how you got here. A wave of confusion hits you. You, you remember going to the temple and the, with the, the grin and the black pillars, mm -hmm. your companion, Melon, reaching the big doors and then that, that searing flash of light. And as these pieces of memory come back to you, you then take in your surroundings and you see no evidence of your companions around you. How did you get here? What happened? The next thing you realize is time's probably passed quite a bit. It's A, last thing you remember, it was in the evening. And B, you are incredibly thirsty and your mouth and lips are cracked from dryness. And you seem to be in need of water. And this is where we start. 
you on top of this dune. So as you brush yourself off from the sand, could you please describe yourself, Leonidas? <sighs> um, yes, uh, Leonidas Goldspear II uh, is a large uh, Leonin, uh, currently wielding a large greatsword with two hands, um, has a half plate armor on and a golden mane, like, like huge, huge, golden mane and then most of most of him fur so it's more on the split of like human lion it's more lion than it is human um and yeah uh he he stands i think i think he's like six four something like that when he's on his mm -hmm. on his hind legs and any physical features other than the mane that he would stand out with the main's the most thing. Some, some, some tiny scars here and there from, from bar fights before, uh, and and fights with other people from before. Um, but yeah, no, uh, he uh, that really, really this this gorgeous like luscious mane that kind of like almost movie movie esque flows <laughs> in the wind. Uh, Lion King, basically. I think Lion, Lion King. King. Lion King esque. Yeah. <laughs> All it's right. like he has a fan on him constantly. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is actually pretty accurate. It is uh, as there's a slight breeze coming up from this dune, and if it wasn't, it was. It's not. It's more. We're we're more towards the winter season, so it's not as painfully hot as it could be in this desert. However, the sun is quite harsh, and you seem to be quite thirsty. Hmm. What do you do? Uh, I look around and I see, is there any, uh, do I see any sort of like, uh, like town or anything around me that I could maybe go get a drink or some, something? Okay. Uh, so you're where's, trying the, like... where's the, where's the, uh, uh, where's the, uh, the, th like the thing that I was originally going into? Am I anywhere near that or? Well, roll me a perception check. Okay. To see what you can see. Dice are provided by my wonderful girlfriend. Uh, uh, that's a fifteen. Uh, a fifteen. Okay, with a with a fifteen, excellent. You are able. You kind of like get up to the top of this dune. You look around, and unfortunately, you do not see the uh, the temple, temple. Uh, and the kind of the rock structure that was that you guys discovered and was built under uh, here in this uh, great sand sea you look around and it's for the most part just dunes as far as the eye can see uh it's difficult after a certain distance you get that heat kind of mirage look um after a while but with a 15 what you do see is off in the distance you see some sort of uh like bird creature a few of them circling in the air way off in the distance um, oh. I go towards the birds. Okay, start heading over. Yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, you start making your way there. As you, as you move, you kind of go through your can your pack because you still have your pack yeah, with you. I think I have some water, some rations, mm -hmm. and some water on. Yeah. Uh, I'll. You have yeah. You have like a half full canteen mm -hmm. uh, in your travel pack, so you have a little bit of water, so you can kind of quench that that search, that thirst a that little thirst. bit, thirst. Uh, as you walk, you kind of like continue to try to get your bearings and look around. Uh, as you come to the second, slightly taller sand dune um, towards the flying creatures, you do get a glimpse way off in the distance, and you're kinda, can, you can kind of you can kind of tell it past that heat radiation coming up. That those dark stones that you would know as the seraphic tear to the north of this desert. So you're at least now you know where north is, and where you are now okay. headed north. Uh, so you head on over. It takes about I would say a good twenty minutes of just okay. like crawling up and down these sand dunes, and get a nice burn in your legs. Uh, but it's a good workout. Just the way I like it. <laughs> uh, and you finally crest over, and as you get closer, you, these birds are buzzards, circling. Okay. What are they circling? Uh, as you come over this dune, you look down, you see that there is a body lying 
in the sand. I go and I search the body and look at who the body is. Okay. Uh, roll me an investigation check. An investigation check, you say? Oof. Oof. Uh, six. Six. Uh, with a six, the, the weird thing, this body, there is no evidence of uh, fire around it, but is very badly burned, almost to a crisp. Uh, so there's really not a whole lot. Uh, I say with a six, you find maybe two silver pieces in a little pouch that is like half burned away on this body. But for the most part, everything has been, the body has been picked at by these buzzards as you shoo them away. And it is burnt to a crisp to be unrecognizable. Okay. So I don't recognize, I like wouldn't recognize that it's melon or something. No, you don't recognize that it's melon from your group. Uh, Just so you know, there's the two people you um, would recognize from your group who you spent a lot of time with was melon. He was a a half elf. And then also Hamina. Uh, um, X X E M I N A. Okay. Um, Hamina was the leader of the Vanishing Grin, Great. the group you were working for, uh, and she was pretty fair. You like kind of after just a few weeks of traveling with her, uh, pretty fair and a good leader. Uh, but you are here at this body. Roll me another perception check to see. Now you're kind of in a secondary area. Ooh, ooh, that's nice. That's nice. Twenty-one. Oh shoot! All right, dope. <laughs> uh, yeah. So with the twenty-one, you kind of have. It seems like you went up in elevation a little bit from like the, the sand dunes keep rising a little higher and higher. So you have from the vantage point of that last apex, you were able to spot one of the obelisks. Uh, who, that are within this desert. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to give you some um, exposition. The obelisks are waypoints for people who are traveling through the desert. Um, they're made by somebody you don't really know, but they uh, point towards the direction of the Moran outpost, which is a small oasis, basically smack dab in the middle of this desert that a lot of treasure hunters, travelers, uh, wanderers will use as a base of operations or at least a place to resupply. Um, and when you guys started off with the Vanishing Grin, you decided that if you ever got separated, you would meet in the Moran Outpost. Moran Outpost. Yeah, it's M O R R A N. It's for your notes. Thank you. Mm-hmm. What he knows I can't spell for everyone watching. Uh... So he spells everything for me. Yep. <laughs> so you standing here in this heat, you have the body of the person behind you and you kind of know your cardinal directions to your South would be the outpost and to the North is the seraphic tear. Okay. Mm-hmm. There's a part of me that wants to go towards the tear, but I also want to, see if I can find melon or I'm going to go towards the, um, the uh, yeah. yeah, I'm going to go for that. Mm-hmm. And just so you know, and this is like common knowledge. And since it's the first session, we haven't, we're, we're still learning. The seraphic tear is akin to the grand Canyon in scale. Oh, it's massive. It is, uh, in an arcane sense, uh, an anomaly because it's think of it like the Bermuda triangle, but at the middle of a desert, Uh, People go in and they never come back. And it's kind of marked by the stones and rocks of this desert. um, Because it's kind of, it shifts from like canyon lands to uh, sand dunes to more canyons of the Seraphic. Those canyons are this black sandstone. And people, and it's, the word on the street is it's very much cursed. So you you know that uh, that enough information about Seraphic tear. But it's a massive canyon within the uh, arm. So you want to, so you had, you said you're heading towards the outpost? The outpost, yes, the outpost. Okay. Uh, you make your way towards the obelisk to kind of hedge your way off and you're actually in luck because you're only about a day's walk from the outpost. Um, you go up to oh, the gosh. obelisk and on it is just inscribed, just like your cardinal directions 
And basically in on each side of this four sided obelisk, like if you go that way for this many days, you're going to run to the, the Gulf. Or if you go this way for this many days, you're going to run to the outpost or to Camden Mesa or something like that. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a people who are, have lost their way in the desert. They're kind of placed throughout in order to find. Uh, mm -hmm. So you start trudging through the desert. Okay. Roll me just a basic, because it's you are dehydrated um, a little bit and hungry. So roll me a survival check to see like how well this goes. All right. All right. All right. What? Folks for watching in the chat, welcome to our first crit fail of the Bards in New York. <laughs> On a okay. thing that shouldn't be a crit fail, like a survival check. Um, <laughs> then, uh, Leonidas. Total, total, it's a four. Well, still a crit fail. So, uh, and this goes back to rules of our session zero. If we have a crit fail, there are consequences. Qu consequences. <laughs> consequences. Uh, so, uh, doesn't mean he won't, he'll like die in the desert alone, but there's going to be what a consequence. Might. So, as you're kind of just trudging through this desert, Leonidas, uh, the sun gets to about midday and it's just beating down on you and you're, you're panting and just, you kind of take, like you start sling your, your great sword off your shoulder to hold it, just to get some weight off of your shoulders. And you do suffer one point of exhaustion. Whoa. So mark that on your uh, character sheet. Um, if you go to conditions on D&D Beyond, it'll be right in there, Dan. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically, you're just going to have disadvantage on things, and you can get ex rid of exhaustion by having a long rest. Cool. Mm -hmm. It takes uh, about the whole day to get to the Moran outpost. Okay. Uh, it... As the sun's starting to set, you kind of get that cool breeze and you stumble into the outpost. And I will describe it for you. The Zedicus, Zedicus Moran founded this outpost about a century ago, using the oasis as a center to navigate the shifting wastes, which is the name of the desert. He learned that due to the very active winds, the dunes are ever-changing, so a traditional map doesn't work. So he and his companions devised a plan to create these obelisks that, no matter what, are always able to stay above the sand, no matter how the uh, dunes shift, so that travelers can find their way through, which is what you have just done. Uh, it's actually a, the outpost itself houses a small monastery. Uh, the monks and the acolytes who uh, live here kind of run the outpost. Uh, it's within a small outcropping of rocks that within, within it are, is a freshwater spring, a uh, natural aquifer that kind of creates a nice, cool, uh, moist environment. Uh, the monks themselves are a little strange um, and eclectic because it's in the middle of a desert and it's they have weird rules and do and mostly only eat cactus, uh, but they make good mead and they are good to the travelers. So it is always a welcome sight to the weary, such as yourself. Um, the monastery itself, there's a few tents on the outside of traders who have set up. Um, there's also a um, barge master who can schedule a sand barge to bring people to either the capital city of Nibu or to um, Camden Mesa to the, the east. And within, there's a few caves. Most of the monastery houses all the caves. Um, there's the monks' quarters, their um, brewing rooms, all that. But there are a couple of them set up for the public because it is a break from the heat and it's a little bit cool and also stays a little bit warmer at night. So as you stumble in, uh, this one attendant, this monk in his, these like kind of like faded gray robes, uh, he comes up to you, he's this halfling and he goes, uh, um, you all right, sir? Can I give you a hand? Yes, I'm fine. 
Oh, um, uh, would you need some rest or some medical attention? I would love to fill up my water bottle and then I'd love to take a rest. I'm quite tired. Okay. Um, well, do you know where the spring is here? Have you been here before? Do you know where the spring is? I've never been here before. All right. Um, well, let me take you. I'll, I'll take you to the spring. And as he kind of leads you one way, he says, um, so, sir, uh, what were you doing here uh, out in the desert all by yourself, if you don't mind me asking? Actually, it's a good question I should ask you. Have you seen any of my fellow companions? They go by the name of Melon and how do you say the other one? Next uh, one. Uh, Hamina. The Hamina. X is a ha. Huh. No, that makes sense. Uh, they go by Melon and Hamina. Uh, I haven't seen no folk coming here by those names, but uh, I don't really keep too much track of names. But what, what are they? Are they part of a group or do they look like anybody? Uh, they one looks like a a, um, a half half elf, half, half. What did you say? A half elf. Uh, Melon's a half elf, and, and uh, then Zamina then. is a golden dragonborn. Oh, Ooh. yeah, Hamina is a golden dragonborn. Uh, let me write that. Uh, and then a golden dragonborn. Ooh. <laughs> That's cool as hell. Uh, cool. Um, yes. Um, one's a half elf, one is a golden dragonborn. We were together looking in the fangs, and I found myself in the middle of the desert all of a sudden without my, my, my companions. And to be honest, I was a bit disoriented. I'm, as you can see, a, a, a large human and fellow, not human. Um, so I am a bit disoriented if we're being truthful. All right, well, come on into where the spring is and I'll, I can go get you some uh, of our cactus. Uh, it's got good vitamins in it, should help you out. Uh, but you. Here, here, come on this way. And I haven't seen uh, people who look like that. Uh, it's, it's been pretty quiet for the most part, except for a few people who are already here for the last couple weeks. So uh, I haven't really seen nobody. Cool. But uh, come this way and I can get you some food. Uh, you look pretty t hurt and tired, so it's on the house. Don't have to pay for it right now, but it is business. So come on this way. And he leads you into the cave. It's just like a couple like outcroppings of rocks. And you go in and sun, like the sun was setting and it, you kind of were getting a slightly cool breeze coming in. Uh, but just like it is a nice, comfortable temperature. Uh, the little freshwater spring coming out of the rocks makes a little pool right in the middle of this cave and they have built out of like either petrified wood uh or stone these benches and looks like uh like stone cots that you can lie on and rest on uh within I, uh, this I, dome structure i look to the monk and i say mm, can i jump in the pool uh uh no uh, there, there's a bathing pool, not this one. This one's the drinking pool. Uh, people fill up their canteens and water, and then we try to keep it clean. Uh, there's a bathing pool down uh, in, in the few caves, just down that way, and he points to a little opening in one of the caves. Um, it's just right down there, and it's it, it, it's plenty good. It's just not, it's like our gray water, you know, uh, you know what I mean? Like, we don't, we don't want to mix those two. Okay. Hygiene. Oh, fair. <laughs> yeah, so um, uh, you can go fill up your water bottle, and I'm going to go run and just get you some cactus. Uh, be right back, all right? Thank you very much. Okay. Um, a moment goes by. Uh, do you, I'm assuming you fill your stuff up and everything. I do. <laughs> can I jump in that pool? <laughs> that pool looks great. I'm kind of jumping it. Well. That's who he is. <laughs> a little awkward. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, uh, I love awkward. it. Yeah. Uh, moment passes. You flip your canteen. You get a, a drink, uh, and uh, you take a seat, just resting for a moment. Uh, the monk comes back with this uh, jar. Uh, it's kind of just clay jar. Brings it to you and uh, sets it down on this sort of 
petrified little coffee table esque uh, piece of stone right there. And he says, uh, "That one's on me. Uh, it should keep it going pretty well. But uh, if you need more, there's a shop just down through any points towards like kind of where you guys came from uh, in the mess hall. You can just go buy. You can buy rations of our cactus." Uh, or if you're looking for other stuff, uh, there's some traders. You may have missed them. They have a tent set up outside. Um, are you looking looking to go somewhere or what you doing? Well, to be honest, I don't fully know. I'm, uh, I would love to find the, the creatures I was with. Um, I'd like to jump in your pool. Oh. Um, those are my those are truly the things i would the two things you want i mean i can definitely help you with one of them just to be clear it's not my pool it is a uh, pool that belongs to the zedekis monastery but i understand it's a pool uh, yeah okay um yeah well if you need to take a bath and clean up because you look like you probably need a good bath you can absolutely go down free of charge there's no 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 need to pay for hygiene please <laughs> uh haha uh -huh. But I don't know. Uh, I haven't seen any uh, dragonborn or half elves coming through here. Uh, I mean, there is a dragonborn outside right now, but they're not golden. They're uh, they're of a kind of a blue color. So, hmm. uh, but I don't. And I don't know. Maybe they know something, but I want to assume. <laughs> uh, but we do have. There's a human that's been in hanging out. He's uh, just came in from a trip, and uh, tomorrow morning, or well, actually late tonight. Uh, however you look at it, there's a barge heading into Camden Mesa. So if you are looking to get a ride on that, maybe that they can take you somewhere if you want to, maybe your friends went already went out to Camden Mesa without you. That could be good. Um, uh, do you, Woody, do you, do? Uh, does Leonidas remember any other, like how many people were in the crew beyond Melon and Hemina? Uh, roll me a uh, intelligence save. Let's see what you remember. Intelligence save. Mm -hmm. uh, a ten. Okay, a ten. Uh, you don't remember like if there was any other contingencies of like if we're not in the outpost where they go. No, I mean like um, would would I notice would rather i'm trying to like it, it, it is the is the other dragon or the human someone that i would remember oh there was a human in the group or oh there was a second dragon born for the most part it was just the three of you uh okay. there was one other individual uh who was a a dwarf a male dwarf uh his name was uh uh krix k r i x uh and he he was pretty quiet he was mostly just like the pack mule of the group he just kind of carried stuff around um but that is that was it was kind of the four of you and they've had people who they've hired in the past and that's kind of how you were serving you were a, a temp if you will uh for the group and uh we have been traveling them for a couple weeks uh the one thing with the 10 i will give you this uh you do know that originally they would often talk about Camden Mesa kind of being their home, like where they mm. started. So mm. uh, they have they usually try to stay away from Nibu, uh, but Camden Mesa is where they started. All right. Uh, he's like, well, well uh, I've, uh, I'm going to go back to my, my brewing, but uh, if you want any food or anything or meat, I told you where it is. And then if you need to buy anything or get on the barge, it leaves at midnight. Your name? Oh, uh, no, where are my manners? Uh, my name's Milton. Outstanding. Yeah. Yeah, Milton the Monk. It's, I can, it's a joke. <laughs> Alliteration. Ha ha. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> okay, well, uh, have a nice uh, day now. And remember, hygiene's important, and I'll see you later. Correct. And he walks on away back through the, the tunnels. Uh, so, Leonidas, what do you do? Sorry, looking at something someone said in the chat <laughs> who knows me well. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, I'm going to go down to the... Uh, doo -doo -doo. 
I'm going to go down to the pool. Actually, oh, uh, I'm going to go. I want to go to the human. Which Where am I closer to? Where the dragonborn outside would be or the human? Uh, you're kind of in just like the first little uh, cave opening. So it's about, uh, they're both, you don't know where the human is. They uh, exactly, he said the dragonborn was outside. Uh, the human, you're not sure where they are. Hmm. Uh, okay, screw that. Uh, uh, I'm going to then, I'm going to then go to the pool uh and take a night or the 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 place i can uh s swim in and then i will afterwards go because i don't need to see the human i'll go afterwards on my way out go to okay. the, yeah uh do you uh so you take your jar um of your pickled cactus and uh you head on towards the bath cave uh just kind of wind again. It, the air is nice and cool in this cave system, and it it feels amazing. Uh, as you enter the the bath area, you see it's a large kind of more of a almost seems like they made like a clay, a hardened clay like base basin that you could just go and like slide into. You know, go to the zoo, <laughs> and there's like the tigers have their like yes. water. Yes, it's it looks like that. <laughs> Yeah, and they just kind of like sit in the water. That's what it is. Uh, and you see there, it's it's open, and there's just one person, uh, male human, just kind of sitting in the water, arms out, just kind of like eating some cactus, chilling. I uh, I full sprint into the water. <laughs> So you kick, 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 and like you get in. I need since like you're running through about like I would say knee deep water. I need you to roll me a dexterity saving throw to see if you like, <laughs> you know, when you run through water and you fall in. Roll yeah. me a dexterity saving throw. <laughs> Ooh, uh, seventeen. <laughs> okay, yeah. So you uh, you you do trip up a little bit, and but instead of like going like an like wiping out and uh, you just kind of like go slowly down and just go into like a little breast breast stroke and just kind of like head just barely out of the water and just <sighs> as awkward as it can be is the way he's doing it. Uh, yeah, this dude, he just kind of sitting there and he's like I uh I I swim over but keeping my my head in the way it is so it's just like on the water and mm -hmm. then I I see him and then I ever so slightly bring it up to just here. And I go, <clears throat> your name? Me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Keith. Okay, Keith. Um, have you seen anyone else in here recently uh dragonborn gold and or dwarf no half elf no nah. i uh, saw that one dragonborn it wasn't gold though you've been tremendously helpful keith and i float away welcome dude <laughs> just goes back to eating his cactus just in so my notes in my notes keith is just some dude is it keith it's a question it's an important question that the chat does have is it keith with a k or a c it is keith with a k so Ooh. it's it's stepdad keith not uh creepy keith not creepy keith yeah <laughs> Good. um okay uh leonidas uh just dips himself fully into water and mm -hmm. stays down there longer than you would think he should mm -hmm. and maybe maybe i don't want to speak for keith with a k uh but i would think that keith might go like stop the chewing and go well you're underwater so you don't know that's true i don't know yeah but that's what i would think might happen okay um you stay under for a little while what's your constitution modifier plus four Oh, so you, I mean, you can hold your breath for a long time, my king. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you just kind of do like just like float in the water for a bit. At the deepest point, it's about it's about like a six foot pool at like its deepest. 
Oh, like, so I'm not. I'm bigger than the pool. Great. Well, if you like, if you if you're standing like straight, dunk, if I you're up. Yeah, yeah, but if you kind of, you can float. Uh, so do you just go under for a bit and come up? I go up for a bit and then and then and then I go. I I, I almost childlike go to go too long and then like and like spring out of the water and, like, <gasps> and then just full sprint out of the water <laughs> huh. weird dude oh. <laughs> goodbye so you... Keith bye dude <laughs> you head on out uh, and uh, I'm, you get did you take your clothes off for that no <laughs> <laughs> nope. just in your wet clothes now in my wet clothes wet oh yeah fur. i'm going hot outside it's <laughs> mostly fur it's fur and and a half plate so All right. maybe some like and maybe some like jorts or something <laughs> not jorts not jorts but, but maybe some like some tight this, some tight, tight, tight fire tight. island <laughs> jorts jorts with a hole in the back for my tail oh uh, god no, uh, no, no, not. I jorts. want that. Somebody draw that, please. Uh, um. <laughs> definitely, 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 like just like some, like ripped shorts in okay. some. All right. Uh, okay, so you you head on out. Uh, grab your backpack, your jar of cactus. Um, so add that to your inventory, just so you know. Pickled one jar of pickled cactus. One jar. Mm-hmm. Uh. So you have, as you kind of come out of the like the little like rest cave, to your right is another cave that is where Milton pointed out the like mess hall um, was for the monastery, and where you could buy some more rations, uh, or you could. They also have their mead if you want to buy that as well. And then you could you kind of come out. You see, there's like three main areas. There's one that's just kind of a a tented. It almost looks like an outside tavern. Uh, sort of set up uh, kind of like a, like a streetcar sort of thing. Mm. Uh, and then there's one small like shack looking place um, on the far end of this kind of like a semicircle of rocks that kind of block the wind. And then to your left, uh, there is, it's first thing you notice is like this circle of bones that come up and it's this massive snake skeleton that, have tarps have been laid over it, and you see there's a group of Leonin with this large table with stuff placed all over it. Um, and those seem to, uh, you surmise that those are the traitor, um, the traitors um, that Milton mentioned. Oh. Mm-hmm. Okay. What uh, do you wish to do? Uh, 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 I'm gonna go. I'd like to go stand by the traders and not how many there's a bunch of leaning just three um okay. there's okay. like two kind of like deeper in the skeleton uh and they have a couple camels with them just like with stuff hanging off uh and then there's one who kind of looks like just kind of standing chest out arms folded and just kind of like watching her but like the monks and stuff go by and just uh looking around I'm gonna go up to all of them uh i'm not gonna say anything i'm just gonna stand there okay they say something to me all right uh so moment passes you kind of go stand there for a second and this leonin who's a little shorter than you but a little bit more rotund Mm -hmm. uh he with his arms crossed kind of looks over you and goes friend what are you doing? What are your tribes? Us? Oh, we we don't belong to a tribe. We've made our own tribe. We are uh, the scale bane, as you can see, and points towards like the giant uh, snake skeleton. The three of you are a tribe? Yes. I mean... Not really, but we have made our own tribe. Let me introduce myself. My name is Thanos Scalebane, and these are my sons, and we are t- just simple traders. Hmm. And 
don't appreciate traitors of my kind. No, 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 no. Not like I trade. Oh, that was my fault. Yes, it was, my friend. But what can I get you? I thought you were. Ha! Ah. Oh boy. Um, what do you have? Well, um, I have quite a few things, and he shows you his wares. Uh, he has a uh, few glass bottles that are just empty. He doesn't like, have any like uh, like uh, uh, armor. Uh, no armor. He does. Uh, he is the one thing a wearable item that he does have uh, that you catches your eye is uh, these pair of goggles that are. Uh, he's like. In case there is a sandstorm, you can put these on and they won't, the sand won't cut into your eyes. I would like those. All right. Um, that'd be five gold pieces, my friend. Do you bargain? Ooh, I mean, of course. What do you have to bargain with? Two gold pieces. Oh, this kind of bargain. I understand. Hmm. Also, I will give you my pants. No, he kinda, no. He kind of looks at your pants and he's like, I don't want your pants. No. They, uh, okay, never mind. Um, three gold pieces. Hmm. All right. Um, how about three gold pieces and I want your cactus? No, that is mine. Okay. Um, do you have anything else to sweeten the pot? These things are, I only have a couple of them and they don't come easy. Um, no, I do not. Uh, no. I'm four. <laughs> Roll me a persuasion check. Great. Yeah. This. For those of you that don't know, I'm not used to playing a character that's this unpersuasive. <laughs> and he's a wee... Ooh! Although it's minus two. Uh, 16. 16? Uh, you say four, and this man kind of chuckles a little bit and goes, <laughs> that's a deal. And just because I like you, uh, I'll throw in one of these glass bottles as well. Oh, you seem wow. new here, and I want to be nice. That's nice of you. Yes, of course. If you ever need to be a part of a tribe... Yes? You can be a part of mine. Oh, that is very kind of you. I'm not uh, a part of it anymore. I was ousted. Oh, well, you could always... We are always looking for muscle if you could join our tribe. Maybe. All right. Well, here are your um, goggles and uh, one glass bottle. Is it an empty bottle? Yes. Um, the, the bottle itself is just like this kind of wide mouth, like mason jar, but with a cork, like a big fat cork that's put on top. Thank you. Yes. Um, so that's four gold pieces, chief. Cool. 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 Down and down. Oops. Okay. okay, you've talked to Thanos. Uh, there's also... I'd like to go to that. I want to go to that. Uh, I say I say to them, I say goodbye. Uh, and then I turn around and I walk towards... I, I, I turn around and I put the goggles on. Uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I'm pretty excited about the goggles for being transparent. Um, I know. I know you would be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I'm going to... I'd like to walk towards the... You said there's a there's a shack? Yeah, on um, the shack itself, you, as you kind of get a better angle on it, it's just kind of a small house, mm -hmm. uh, not very big at all, and just above it in faded paint on a wooden sign says Depot. Like Office Depot? Yeah, like D-E-P-O-T. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and you see there's a, on front of the house, there's a little porch, and there is one human man, uh, 
with a kind of a cow pulled over his head, arms crossed, just sitting up against on this little bench with a kind of a about two by two wooden crate next to him. He has like a, he's like kind of leaning on the crate. I do do? walk up, to, I walk up to the man and again, just stand in front of him. Uh, a moment passes and he like, this this guy kind of like lifts his head up uh and he like the sun's like coming down it's kind of golden hour right now uh and he kind of like the sun's kind of lit in his eyes a little bit and he like looks up and like pulls his cowl back uh he is has dark skin uh a little goatee uh and bald uh and he kind of looks up and he goes um can i help you sir Um, yes. Uh, what's in the crate? He, you say that and he kind of like gets a little uncomfortable. He's like, um, I was out at the uh, obelisks doing some research and it's just the notes I have comp compiled. What research were you doing? I'm sorry, who are you? I'm Leonidas Goldspear II. Oh, um, well, nice to meet you, uh, Leonidas. Um, my name is Hugh, Hugh Thornton. Um, oh my God. It, yes. Well, well, I like your name. Thank you. Um, I was doing just research on the obelisks of their origin and this outpost with uh, Zedekis Moran. I'm writing a paper for a college. Oh. When were you there? Um, a, a college or at the out, this outpost? The outpost. Um, well, college too. It's nice to get to know someone. Well, I uh, went to school um, over at uh, in Marvelhold, uh, and then I have, after I graduated, I came here to start my research, and so I went to the obelisks, and now I am here. Um, uh, but I've been here in the outpost for, um, a week or so, kind of coming back and forth, trying to find where I must go. Hmm. Yes. Um, can I, I help you at all in any way? Well, uh, you have to understand I was, I was near that area recently and I've lost my, my travelers. The people that I'm, or the, the, the half elf and the, the golden dragonborn that I was with. Really? Yes. Hmm. Um, and how, in what manner did you lose them? To be honest with you, I don't actually know. I, this, uh, this morning I woke up and I was, I found myself in the middle of sand. Strange. Um, you could say that. It's quite the mystery you found yourself in. Um, do you know who, who are your friends? Um, maybe I've been in this area for um, a few months and maybe I know of them. Correct. Um, my friends are uh, Melon. Uh, he's a half elf. And yes. uh, Hemina, who is a golden dragonborn. I've... Uh, we were, we were uh, uh, searching a, uh, a, a temple. Well, not a temple, a, 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 a tri, a, 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 a tomb. Just keep your voice down. Don't say that too loudly. Say what too loudly? And he kind of like brings you in. He's like, I am aware of some individuals who are bandits who would want to take stuff from you if they say you've sacked a temple or oh, tomb. I'm of some sort. I don't worry ever about bandits. I may seem a little weird. However, truthfully it's refreshing. Mm. Okay. Um however, I've been in a lot of fights. So I don't ever really worry about someone trying to attack me cuz I'll just attack them first. Oh, all right. Um Good to know. Um, 
You must seem, seem to be a good person to know, uh, Mr. Leonidas. Leonidas. Oh, Leonidas. Yes, I apologize. It's okay. Um, are you, and he points to like the door of the, the building. Are you booking passage for the barge? Oh, that's what this is. Yes, um, this is the barge depot. I thought it was a shack. Sounds of the city. <laughs> Sounds of the city, folks. Um, I thought it was a shack. It's both. Oh. Yes. Are you booking package? Yes, um, I'm I'm getting on the barge tonight. Oh. Um, I need to get back to Camden Mesa and meet with a colleague. What's your colleague's name? Uh, her name is Cora. Oh. Yes. Okay, cool. Um, well, um, and then he just walks into the <laughs> Okay, cool. Uh, you see uh, Hugh kind of like give a little like <laughs> chuckle uh, and he uh, and you head on in. The, the room itself as you enter, just it's a little like kind of saloon door and it just kind of swings open. Uh, very small. There is a cot in the corner and then one side there's a little like kind of standing desk and there's just one dude um, standing there with his, uh, he's just a kind of a rotund human, bald with a little, a little tuft of hair coming down, kind of put to the side right here. And he goes, why hello, how can I help you, sir? Um, mm, yes, hi. I'd like to, um, I'd like to, um, uh, I'd like to buy a, a, a ticket to uh, Camden Mesa on the barge. All right. Well, um, I don't know if the, the, the barge is a free thing. It's uh, sponsored by the monastery. So uh, you do not have to pay for no tickets. Is that amenable to you? Is that what? Amenable to you. Are you, are you okay with that? Oh, well, yes. All right. Well, um, uh, well, the barge should be here at midnight. Just be here to get on it, and the two barge runners should be able to bring you there safely. The trip itself should last uh, about uh, eight or so hours, maybe ten, depending on how the weather is. Hmm. All right. No. Any? Are you traveling with the group today, sir, or are you just you today? What's the difference? I, the barge can only fit so many people. So if you're traveling with like, I don't know, like 10 people, that could be kind of difficult. I may have to ask you to wait for another barge. No, I'm not traveling. I, I the, the man I met out there, he's traveling. Oh, yes. I already worked with Mr. Thornton. He, she has got a ticket and he's going to be getting on the barge as well. Okay. Well, so no, I'm not. All right. Well, just uh, here and he kind of like writes a little note rips off his little like stamp little booklet thing and he's like here you go and i uh, just give that on to the two barge attendants and they'll sit you right down and you'll be good thank you all right sure is that all you need yes all right well have a nice day now oh okay goodbye goodbye <laughs> turns out <on, watch. laughs> The leaniness doesn't know how to leave a room. No, it's incredibly <laughs> awkward. <laughs> All right. Uh, you walk out and uh, Hugh kind of looks up at you and he says, so um, you're going to be a barge buddy? Sure. I have to warn right. you. I'm a little, I don't know if you've noticed or not. Uh, most people don't tend to me. I'm a bit of a um, awkward human. Leonine, Leonin, I should say. All right. Um, well, I'm a bit of a awkward human. Um, not a Leonin, I would say. Um, so I think it will be all right. Okay. Thank you for talking to me. Most people of, don't know what to do. Of course. Um, and I look forward to our trip together. Hmm. Me as well. Yes. All right. So you have your ticket to Camden Mesa. 
Uh, you could wait just until the barge shows up and get on, or there's a little bit more to explore if you wish. Uh, I'd like to explore as much as I can. I'll, okay. I'll go. Yeah, no, I'd like to explore. What else is there? Is there another trading places? Or? Yeah, there's a little bar um, here outside. And now that the sun's going down, like it's rather, it's a little more pleasant outside. It's like kind of now down towards like the 60s, um, high 60s, low 70s. Uh, and it's going to get cold soon at night because it gets really cold in the desert. But uh, there's a bar and you see there is a, a, a cloaked figure kind of sitting at it, drinking this tankard. Uh, a big bag kind of slung over them and like sitting up against their chair. And then there is the mess hall with the mead and the cactus um, stores. Uh, I'll go into the bar and then I'd like some mead. Okay. Uh, the bar itself isn't so much like a, uh, um, like uh, you don't enter it, you just kind of like go and sit down. Uh, it's like a, basically a, a, a counter with some chairs and like a couple like small tables. Uh, but the only person here is a, a monk who is at a big barrel and the tent going over and then the person sitting at the big counter. Cool. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he just wanted to see it. I don't think he wants to do anything in there. I think he just wanted to go inside and he'll look around, kind of take it okay. and then walk out again. <laughs> <laughs> and then, All right. The, the monk kind of looks at you and like holds like a mug and just kind of like he turned around and like, okay, yeah, all right, cool, cool. And then <laughs> puts the mug down. And then he goes and he walks into the mead place and he goes and he tries to find good mead. Okay. Uh, you head into the um, area and as you enter, there is, it's kind of two walls. One, it just seems to be a, almost like a little like storehouse that's been built into the side of the wall and it's just jars of that cactus okay um and it's just kind of sitting in this sort of this clearish liquid and they're just sitting in there uh and is the cactus is it is it is it cactus water or is it a cactus inside of a jar yeah they're um they are pieces of cactus that have been prepared and like de-needled and they're pickled inside of like a mixture oh, of like oh, vinegar oh. and cactus water and spices um, so that they're pickled. Got it. Cool. Yeah. Great. Fun. So uh, it, the, the vinegar, it's like vinegary cactus water, but it's not just cactus water. Hmm. Um, and then on the other side, there's just these like, there's like some growlers, a couple barrels, um, that most of this cave actually is taken up by the, the metery setup, mm -hmm. or it's just these large barrels, um, just kind of sealed and sitting. Um, and there you are. Uh, is, did, did Horton, Thornton? Uh, Hugh. Hugh. <laughs> uh, did Hugh come with me? Uh, no, Hugh has, is staying by the depot oh. with his stuff. I was gonna buy Hugh something. All right. Uh, <laughs> you could still, but. That's true. That's fair. Okay, I'm gonna go into the mead place, mm -hmm. and I will. Uh, I uh, I think he feels a little more. Um, yes, Horton does hear a hear. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go into the mead place, and I'm going to. Now that I feel a little more comfortable in the area, I'm going to speak first when I enter a room, uh, and I will say, "I'd like your finest mead." All right, and this uh, woman turns around, a buxom uh, dwarvish woman, uh, red hair tied back in a few braids and it kind of all comes down into one braid and a, a short cropped beard. Um, and she turns around and says, all right, you like the um, mead, huh? Yes. All right, um, well, uh, I have a rule if I ever meet anybody who wants my meat and I've never met before, I need to meet them. So who are you? What? Who are you? What is your name? I need to know your name. Oh. I'm Leonidas Goldspear II. Nice to meet you, Leonidas. My name is Mona Ironnail. I enjoy your name. Thank you. Um, we have two different types of mead. We have our dark mead and our light mead. Which do you prefer? The dark meat. The dark meat, all right. Um, she turns around and is like, um, how much would you care for? Uh, 
Leonidas. Um, what do you normally suggest of a Leonin of my stature? Well, um, if you hold your liquor well, I would say maybe a growler or two, if you can pay for it. Um, they aren't very expensive, but... How much uh, is a growler? Um, if you want a uh, growler, it's going to be one silver. That's that's one silver is uh, 10 silver equals one gold, Dan. Oh, I also have two silver. Um, one silver, yes. Oh, wow. I will take two growlers. All right. Well, uh, both dark. No, one dark, one light. All right. Well, let me grab for you and um, two silvers, please. Okay. Thank you. you. Takes the silvers. Uh, she counts them as. Puts them, puts them like in a little pouch that she has around her waist and goes and fills up the growlers. And it's first one that comes out, it's kind of this dark kind of, for a second, you almost think it looks a little green, but it's this kind of like, like earthy brown liquid comes out and it, um, you see the foam kind of come out over the edge of the growler and she takes this lar this piece of cork and just like poof, slaps it on, uh, puts it there on top and then she says, oh, there's your dark. Uh, and goes over, fills with the light one, same way the foam comes out uh, and puts it down. There's your light. Um, anything else I can help for you, sir? Huh. No. All right. Well, have, have a great day. Oh. Go in peace, my friend. Oh, thank you. You as well. Mm hmm. Um, so now you have two growlers one uh, dark mead, one light mead. Okay. Right. What, what's what's your plan now, Chief? He stands there, and then and then, uh, yes. Uh, Can I help you with anything, sir? Uh, you, uh, oh, you stand right. there like you want something. What do you want? No, I'm sorry. I have trouble leaving rooms. Do you need me to teach you? No, no. I know how to do it. I just have trouble leaving rooms. I don't know how to. Sorry. And he turns around, and walks out. All right, he's a funny guy. Are you Borat? <laughs> a little Borat, little isn't Borat? it? <laughs> I try to do Russian. My it was wife. a little Borat. <laughs> my wife. Oh, my wife. wife. <laughs> um, no, she's just a little Russian, but it little comes Russian. out well, you know. Boraty. Uh, all right. So you head on out, and you've kind of explored everywhere. You haven't yeah. the the one cloaked figure you haven't talked to, but. Uh, or if you would just want me to start making up monks to talk to. Oh, where's the cloaked figure? At the bar oh, that you walked in and walked Our, out. Oh, oh, and I walked in, walk out. Okay, I'll go back in there because I do want to talk to the cloaked figure. And then I will go to the uh, play, uh, barge, whatever. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so you walk on up uh, and the that like younger looking monk kind of gets excited and like uh, have, grabs a, a jug and like looks at you and like points to the jug. That is a jug. Yeah. Um, would you like me to pour you some mead? Oh, sorry. Oh, no, I've got two growlers. I just oh, bought them. Oh, all right. Um, well, just so you know, I, you get one free mead or cactus juice if you uh, are taking the barge. Oh. It's like complimentary of the monastery. Okay, I'll have a mead then. All right, uh, light or dark? Uh, I'll take a dark one for myself. Okay. And like, kind of like waddles over. He's this kind of gnome, uh, like just hairy, like a big beard, like goes past his stomach and just like walks over, fills up your this little like kind of tankard jug and brings it over and puts it on the counter next to the cloak figure and says, all right, that's all it is, um, enjoy. Uh, I look at the cloak figure and I say, who are you? Uh, second passes. And they kind of lean up from their table and like look over at you. And it's this, uh, first thing you notice is kind of like this almost snout-like face um, that comes up into these like feathers. And it's a blue dragonborn. Is that uh, from outside or? The one that was mentioned, yes. Outside. Yeah. Oh. 
Um, because the, the bar itself is a, it's an outdoor bar. It's just a oh, tent okay, over okay, it. Okay, it's okay. not an actual like room. Got it, got it. Uh, and she looks over at you and goes, yeah, can I help you? I was just intrigued who you were. Oh, uh, name's Ulysses. Oh, okay. You happened to, you didn't happen to see a, a, a gold gra- dragonborn. No, uh, is there a name? That's not a great, it's not for me. Heman. Oh, I, I, I know a gold dragonborn named Hamina, but. Uh, Hamina, my bad, sorry. You're good. Um, I know one, but I don't, I haven't you, seen her in a while. Why? You do know her. Yeah, yeah, we've ran together in the past. Hmm. Okay. Um, no reason. And he downs the mead and walks out. <laughs> and she just goes, huh, okay. Uh, the mead, it tastes, at first, uh, the first thing you get is like this very pungent cactus flavor, um, which is a little bit, I, I'm going to imagine, I've never had cactus, but I'm going to imagine it kind of tastes like uh, like a, uh, uh, yeah, like an earthier seaweed. Like it has, it's not, it's not like the, was it umami? That's the flavor or whatever it is, but it's not like, it's not like the, but like the earthiness, um, like almost like matcha-y. Yeah. Um, but like very uh, laid back. Uh, but then like you get like the sweetness from a little bit of the honey that's used. And it's actually like weird at first, but after you like, you kind of like, if you were to take more sips instead of just chugging it, it's um not, not bad. So it's kind of an earthy honey mead uh i'm gonna i'm gonna assume that leonidas can just really hold his liquor um he's been in a lot of bars and he's been yeah. in quite a few bar fights and he's been <laughs> in uh quite a few situations where he's had to just be like okay yeah totally all right yeah you talk like you just down it and i'm not gonna have you roll it's just a it's just a tankard of mead so Sweet. if it was like your fourth then maybe but yeah. it's just one yeah um Okay, cool. So yeah, you 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 down it, and you just where do you go now? I'm gonna go back to, uh, uh, Hugh. Okay. And I'm gonna go uh, sit by Hugh until the boat comes. All right. Uh, just a quick question: What's your passive insight? It should be on your character sheet to the left. My passive insight is thirteen. Thirteen. Okay. The one thing I will say about Hugh that like you can, you go to him and you sit down he has a sort of nervous energy about him. Like you come around the corner and he jumps. Um, like he's a little nervous now. Mm. Um, yeah, just so you know. Are you okay? Um, yes, I'm, I'm fine. I uh, just uh, a little anxious for the trip. Why are you anxious? Oh, no reason. Uh, just... I've heard of bandits uh, trying to take these barges of travelers and it makes me a bit nervous. Trust me when I say this, you'll be fine. Is that a a guarantee or uh, Mm -hmm. just? It's a guarantee. And he kind of like, you say that and he kind of like sits up a little bit and goes, if I understand, um, thank you. Mm. And... I will watch your back as well. Good. Light or dark? And he holds up both the growlers. Oh, um, light. No, d- dark, no. Mm. Pick the light. Light, yes, okay. I don't like the light. Take the oh, dark. All right, I thank you. Dark. Um, thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, cheers. As to you. Clink. He takes a sip and like, just like a little, like he just like, and like enjoys it. Uh, I think I'm going to take maybe, a Growler's got what, maybe? A growler's, I don't know, it's actually. It's like 64 ounces, I think. Yeah, no. yeah I think it's like 64 <laughs> ounces. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm looking at my water bottle. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'll maybe do a fourth of it. Okay. Take a yeah. Of it. 
Yeah. And uh, you like have like, there's like a, she gave you when you bought them, they have like these little like pieces of hemp and rope, these short little pieces that you can tie off so they can kind of hang from something. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Uh, okay, cool. Cool. Uh, then I'm going to use this to fast forward. You just, you sit with uh, Hugh and just have a little bit of small talk. Uh, and as the sun goes down, it gets a little chillier. Um, some monks come out and light some fires. Uh, and they just kind of hang, the people are hanging out, roasting some cactus. Uh, some food is passed out to everybody in the, in the area. Uh, just these like roasted pieces of cactus and uh, it's good. There's like a nice little glaze on it, but nothing too special. Uh, they, it seems like they just kind of get by here. It's not like they have like elaborate meals, but it works. Uh, the kind of the routine is broken by a, in the darkness and you got some light from the moons. There are three moons in the sky um, as they shine down. So I, um, there's one I believe is full. Uh, so there's a little bit of light coming in. You can see pretty well. And you see a dust cloud coming towards you guys. Not huge, not like a storm, but just like, looks like something's traveling towards you. Uh, finally, the depot manager, uh, he comes out and he uh, says, all right. Um, uh, no, what was his voice? All right, um, 10 minutes till uh, the, the sand barge is here. So uh, everybody who is taking a ride, just make sure you're here and accounted for so you can uh, get on and continue on your journey. <laughs> All right. And he like just kind of waddles back into the room. Uh, so Hugh is the kind of looks at you and says, well, uh, next leg of the journey, shall we say? Correct. That is what will happen now. <laughs> Good. Uh, so you guys get like, Hugh picks up his crate and is carrying it. Uh, and like sets it down, uh, like kind of like outside where like there's a flag marker of where the barge stops. Uh, you join him, and then one other person, Ulysses, comes up and joins you as well. Uh, and uh, you all just she just kind of looks at you, arms crossed. Uh, she's like chewing on some of the roasted cactus, just chilling. Ulysses, the dragon the dragonborn, oh, okay. the blue dragonborn. Yes, yeah. Uh, the barge, as it pulls up, it looks, it looks basically like two large sleds and a platform and a large sail. Uh, the wind, because of the evening and the, the wind coming through, it has picked up, uh, and there's a good bit of wind blowing. Uh, coming off the barge, you see are these two thin figures. Uh, both seem to be uh, tabaxi, uh, which are cat-like individuals. Uh, they have light markings, um, almost look like leopards, um, if you want to like think of markings. One's a little bit more of a reddish, one's more of like a, a yellowy tan. Uh, and as they come up and come to and like pull down their sails and come to a stop from the wind, uh, they walk up and the depot manager comes up and meets them. And they exchange some words. Depot manager just kind of points at the three of you and they nod. And one of them comes up, uh, the darker tabaxi to you and looks at you guys and say, all right, uh, so uh, my name's Curdy. That's my sister, Kazi, and uh, we're your runners today. Uh, is this all the stuff you guys are bringing? Yes. All right, uh, well, just let's uh, load on up and we can head on out of here. Okay, um, so they quickly just grab the crate, load it up. Hughes like, is like very um, attentive on the crate and is like, oh, 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 be careful, be careful. Um, oh, uh. um, but you all load up. It's just a couple of like big steps. You're about five feet off of like the sand. Uh, and the it's mostly just like a big platform with some sails coming off of three different points of this two sleds and a platform. Uh, very, if you avatar the last airbender, the sand benders, like so. that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's kind of how I imagine it looking, uh, and to kind of give you a visual of it. Uh, Curti then says, once everybody's loaded up and, uh, so, uh, yeah, it's going to be, a not too bad of a trip. We should have some good wind on us and, uh, uh, it should take only about, mm, uh, better part of three days. Uh, 
the quicker route is a little uh, blocked off by a, a land uh, rock slide through the canyon. So we have to go to a different pass. So uh, it's gonna take a few more days. Uh, is that okay with everybody? Not like you have much of a choice? Yes. All right, cool. And, and Hugh just kind of says, that's fine, yes. Uh, and uh, you see Ulysses just kind of go, snod. Uh, he says, all right, well, uh, let's get started. And the, they quickly, like, both of them together kind of push the sand barge and like realign it to almost seems like a, almost like a road. It's like kind of a gap between two dunes. Uh, and they unfurl the sails and the wind grabs it and you guys are off traveling. Uh, it's pretty fast. Like it's faster than any horse you've been on. Um, that's uh, the wind itself is pushes it quite a bit. Uh, it's hard to talk while you guys are riding, but after a little bit, uh, I'll fast forward. The first day passes, no incident. Uh, they camp in the midday when it's the hottest and rest. Uh, and they have like a whole tent set up and all these like very thick, hides kind of block from the wind and the heat uh and then as the sun starts to go down you pack back up you load in and you go uh you guys they have supplies for you they have uh, rations for available for you uh you continue down the next day uh you're kind of getting to where the the dunes are a little less um it's less dune like sand, like fine sand dunes and more of uh, badlands where there's a few bit of uh like uh, desert vegetation and um, maybe even some of those cactus that you are, have been eating and off in the distance you're able on like a clear day when there isn't the mirage uh, you're able to see these like wall of canyons that exist that kind of separate the um, gleaming wastes um, or the shifting wastes would I name it uh, I don't have that I don't know I go, uh, the uh, I just want to make sure so I can say it again. So I, oh, the shifting wastes. Um, the kind of separates the shifting wastes from Camden Mesa and the coast. Uh, so it gets on to the, the next evening uh, and you guys are like coming in. And uh, as you get to this point, you see that uh, Curdy and Kazi are a little uneasy with they're just your taxi. passive insight. Yeah, they're, they're the two, um, like they run the barge right. and they just, they like keep the ropes going. Uh, they seem a little uneasy. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Hugh leans in and he's like, do you think they're expecting anything? Probably. You know- Are you expecting something? Maybe, I'm unsure. Um, but, um, I'm just a little nervous. Okay. Well, again, what I told you is correct. Don't be nervous. All right. Um, and you see me just kind of like just wringing his hands, just like constantly. And like, he takes out this little notebook and starts flipping through it. And just like, is muttering to himself, closes what's, it. Can I, uh, uh, I ask him, oh, um, what's in your crate? Oh, um, he kind of looks around and he says, as I said, um, just some notes of research of the ob obelisks. Oh, it's that crate. Yes. Um, yeah, just the one. My bad, my bad. Um, uh, yeah. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. um, yes, yeah, just, just, I've just been doing some research for a paper. Um, roll me an inside check. I was, say. I was about to yeah. say, he seemed yeah. but, uh, 16. He rolled the three Outstanding. Uh, on his deception and he has a plus one. So four, but you were, you just, he like says the definitely with that roll, it's not just notes in there. It's something else. Also, it's a heavier crate. So you don't, they don't know. I look at him and I, and I look in, I look in his eyes and I say, don't lie to me. Roll me an intimidation check. I I don't think it's. Or or I, would you? Uh, 
Or is this more of like a persuasion? It's like a, a yeah, it's like a, uh, well, either one of them is going to be bad. Yeah, uh, do 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 which, whichever one you want. Like, I don't know if it's going to change too they're much. They're going to be the same. They're going to yeah. be the same. So I'll do, I'll do, uh, I'll do persuasion. 16. 16? Uh, yeah, so with the 16, he like looks around reaches into one of his like pockets because he has all these little like like pockets and satchels that he just kind of reaches into and he pulls out a piece of paper and uh you see him kind of flick his hand and a quill appears in his hand and he just writes um and just passes you a note um and do you open it Mm -hmm. you open it and it reads uh it's not just notes I was searching a tomb as well. I don't trust the other one on this barge. I whisper to him, the dragonborn. Um, and you just see the, he kind of, as he's just taking a sip of his growler. As he like picks up his growler, you see him just kind of tap on his nose. Oh, cool. Put it down. Um, I apologize. Uh, you just see him just kind of like waves his hand like no worries um he doesn't seem he's being quiet though and he's definitely nervous all right okay uh at this point the barge itself comes to like a bit of a stop like they pull like you hear curdy and uh kazi yell and like hey uh pull it in right here and you guys very like very quickly like they even put like some these seemingly breaks into the ground to like really just kind of like lurch it to a stop um, and the wind's blowing, and uh, Hugh's like, well, what's, what's going on? Uh, Kazi speaks up and says, um, this is uh, hard to say, but we think that there's some sort of uh, ambush up here. Uh, if you guys can see, this is the last bit of length of desert until we get into the canyon lands, and it's usually a point in this area where maybe some bandits will try to pick us up because as we get into the canyons, there'll be uh, escorts after we get in there a bit with, uh, from Camden Mesa who will keep us safe, but this is kind of their last chance. And we haven't seen any yet, which makes us think that it's now. Um, so if you guys need to do anything to get ready for maybe a bit of a fight, like duck and cover, we just, we're gonna angle her and just try to go as fast as we can. Leonidas just stands up and like pulls out his sword <laughs> and kind of just nods to the two of them. Uh, they like see and they kind of like go, "All right, uh, cool. That's hasn't happened in a while." Uh, uh, and Hugh just kind of like sits, like hunkers down a little bit. Uh, the Ulysses just like has been on the other side, hasn't talked to you guys at all. She's just been doing her own thing. Uh, she just kind of looks over and goes, okay. <laughs> uh, so. Uh, uh, they look at you and they say, um, so are you ready? Yeah. All right. Go. And so they like they like get a jump off the the barge really quick, reangle it, open the sails, and like they open like an extra bit and like a kind of like a offshoot one that kind of like pulls it a little bit harder. And you guys just like start off a little bit slow, but as the wind a gust of wind comes up, it hits it, and you guys take off. Uh, as you take off, roll me a perception check. Ooh, these dice are rolling very well. Um, that is a eighteen. An 18, okay. Uh, with the 18, uh, you look around and you see these two small clouds of smoke coming in from either side. And as you kind of, as they come into sight, you see them, they are these two smaller, almost like sand skiffs, uh, like a, like almost like a, a windsurfer, but a little yeah, bit bigger. Yeah. And there's, you see that there's one person who's like driving it and there's one person who is riding um, and they have these grappling hooks that they're swinging and roll initiative. Oh, whoa. Okay. Um, cool. Oh, Daniel. 
Uh, that my initiative is an 11. An 11? Okay, cool. Same as Hugh. Um, you'll go four. Cause I think you're, what's your dexterity? Uh, 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 13. All right, Leo. Yep, you're higher than him. All right, uh, 11. Uh, they got, oh shoot, okay. Uh, ooh, no. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, so your bar just taking off and like you see Cassie and Curdy just like, like grabbing all these things, like throwing uh, ropes to each other and just trying to like keep it like on as fast and straight a path towards the, um, the pass, like this little, basically a crevasse that you guys can just barely fit through in the canyons. Uh, right off the bat, uh, you're standing there, and so you're kind of towards the front of it. Uh, Ulysses towards the back, and Hughes is right here in the center, kind of like standing next to his crate. Uh, you hear a sound, and you look, you turn back, and you see Ulysses has kicked uh, Hugh to the ground, and is like grabbed the crate, and is trying, is gonna roll to try to like rip it open. Oh, uh, does he do it? Uh, yeah, so Ulysses, she grabs it and she just <laughs> rips the top off and uh, that's going to be her turn. She's like standing and looking in to this crate. Okay. I, um, I run. Oh. Not your turn yet. Not your bye, turn bye, bye. yet. Bye, 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 bye. Uh, the bandits come in close and uh, they're going to, both of them are going to just kind of throw these two javelins. Each one has one jav javelin they're going to throw. One's going to go towards you. Uh, does a four beat your armor class, Chief? It does not. So first one just kind of like swings wide and just like whoosh, right past your head. And you just kind of duck under it and you see the bandit who was shooting at you. Next one's also going to throw one towards you. Uh, a five. No. Uh, just can both of them just whiff, whiff. And you just kind of dodge out of both as you like see Ulysses across the barge going through the crate. Uh, now it is your turn. Okay, I'm going to run towards um Ulysses and I'm going to try and grab her and throw her off the uh thing okay uh so let's say for this one uh roll just to try like shove her right um roll it's gonna be a contested strength check so roll me a uh strength saving throw right. and so will she That's a 21. Ooh, she got a 19. Ooh. So you you like just kind of run up and just like ooh, give her a big old shoulder. Uh, and she like comes back off of it and she's like pushed back five feet right on the edge. Let's see if she goes off. She like is able to kind of like steady herself and she's on the edge just, and now you see her take out this uh, scimitar and kind of holds it um, ready just pointed right there at you. Uh, and now it's Hugh's turn. Actually, as a oh. as a bonus action, I'd yeah. like to do Daunting Roar. <gasps> I know. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, creatures that are within 10 feet of me that can hear me must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or be frightened until the end of uh, your next turn. Is that all creatures? Says, as a bonus action, once per rest, creatures of your choice. Oh, duh. Okay. So, cool. So, Ulysses. 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 All right. Um, it's Ulysses, not Cs. Ulysses. Ulysses. Yeah. It's singular, if you will. We're learning. Uh, well, on, what is it, a wisdom save? Yeah. Five, chief. Yes. Great. <gasps> uh, so, you just let out this... <gasps> And like your fangs come up and your teeth yeah. and your nose scrunches up uh, and you just have your, your sword in one hand, uh, just muscles rippling. And you see Ulysses mm -hmm. kind of like, like realize that maybe she bit off more than she could chew right here. Uh, uh, but you see kind of her eyes dart between you and the crate in between you two. Uh, all right. Okay, now we go to Hugh's turn. Hugh's gonna go, um, to take care of her. I have. I'll take care of the 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 skiffs. And you see him kind of wave his hands in the air, and just poof, shoots. And these four little orbs of energy just go pew 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 pew, and they just kum, 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 kum. And you see one like 
two people on both skiff just like fall off and one skiff just fall to the side and just <laughs> and roll in the sand. So one skiff is taken care of by Hugh. Um, that, um, in, that is the end of that round. Let me make sure that's cast for Hugh. Nice it is. Uh, and now we go towards top of the round, back to Ulysses. Uh, Ulysses looks at you and then runs up right in front of you, grabs the crate. Um, am, I and wrong, she, am I wrong that is it doesn't frighten mean that she has to run away from me? Oh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'm she sorry. Is, yeah, she's frightened of me. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Um, let me just double check. <laughs> Cause I, I forget. I forget exactly what frightens does. Um, yeah. I'm is pretty it, sure that's, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. They become frightened until the end of, until the beginning of my turn. Oh, yeah. Their end, the end of my next turn. So, oh, and can't re- willingly move closer. I right. forgot about that bit. Yeah. Um, absolutely. So yeah, you you roar at Ulysses. Ulysses is just kind of like like darting, like like afraid to like meet your gaze, but just trying to figure it out. Uh, it's uh, so looks around and you see it's just gonna reach up and just try to like slice with its scimitar at one of the sails, and one of the ropes go. <laughs> And your barge slows down considerably. Oh, um, right. And so, and that's, he, 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 she just stands there and like trying to figure out how to get the crate, but not get close to you because she's afraid of you. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's where she'll end her turn. So now it's the other bandits. Uh, one's going to, they, they kind of pull up next to it. Uh, your barge, now that's slowed down. And one makes a jump to try to get up. One of them tries to make a jump to get onto the barge with you. It does. So kind of you're standing here, Ulysses is across from you, kind of to your back right, uh, there is a bandit who's now on the uh, barge with you holding a short sword and just ha and is going to come up and try to slice at you. Mm -hmm. Oh. I'm not going to use this dice anymore. I rolled a two. So nope. (laughs) Goes to slice at you, and you it just like just was like kind of overwhelmed by like jumping and like I made it. <laughs> it goes to <laughs> hit you and misses. Uh, okay, cool. Now it is your turn, Leonidas. Okay, I'm going to. Uh, I really want to get it. Okay, I'm gonna run towards Ulysses, uh-huh. and I'm going to uh, hit her with my great sword. Okay, uh, roll me an attack. Is a oh no a ten a ten so you go and uh, she's not quite as big as you but she's a little bit more nimble so just kind of like just dodges out of the way and just like glances your blow with her scimitar and puts it to the side and then reposts and is ready for the next attack mm. um, so does not hit you uh, yeah anything else you want to do no I can't do anything. Else. Okay, and she is no longer frightened by you. Uh, all right, now it is Hugh's turn. Hugh goes, oh, shoot, 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 shoot. Um, I say, I say, shoot the other one. Uh, he kind of looks and he just nods. He runs up to the other one and you see him just kind of like wave his hands and just put his hands on him and this jolt of electricity shoots through him. Let's see how much damage he does. A D8. Ooh, Hugh, baby boy. Uh, he just puts like hands on this bandit and this bandit just and just like crumples to the ground and falls off and is fall, uh, now just left behind dead on the oh. desert floor. Uh, nice. So is, is that both of the, first of all, Hugh, oh. Hugh is winning this battle, folks. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he, uh, is that both of the things gone? Yep. Now it's it's well. There's one that there's still a driver on it. Okay. And then there's the other one. Uh, there's Ulysses with you. Great. Uh, okay. So that's the end of Hugh's turn. Now it's back to Ulysses. Uh, Ulysses is like sees you there. Is going to uh, is going to try to shove you out of the way. Uh, and so it's going to be a strength check. Uh, 17 
Is it? Everybody yeah, a contest. It's a contest. So oh, I need you oh, to roll I'm me sorry, a strength sorry, save sorry. as well. That's what I thought. Um, I got an 18. Oh my God. Okay. Uh, yeah. So he, like tries to shove you and you just kind of like, like, like just, uh, she shouldered into a brick wall and she, you just hear, oh, shit. Uh, she is then going to just, uh, not, she's not disengaging. She's just going to skirt around you. Can I, um, opportunity attack? Uh, not yet. Cause she's still within, like, she's oh, like she's trying to like, okay. she's like within your range. And then she gets kind of next to the crate and that goes away and doesn't disengage, but gets out of fighting okay. range. And I will, um, I will use an opportunity attack and I'll swipe her with my crate. Roll me. attack. There we go. Uh, 19. 19. Yeah. You hit roll for damage chief. That's great. Yeah. Oh, um, Wow. Okay. Uh, that is uh, six, uh, 12 points of damage. 12 points of damage. Ooh. Mm -hmm. So you do a good hit on her. You, you come down and as she like backs away, you like reach and slice in and you see it cut across her face, leaving a gash. You see all this blood come pouring out of her face. She's like anger in her eyes or yellow, uh, but she's still up. Uh, she, now that she's out of your range, she picks up a crate like just picks it up and goes to run and jump on the other skiff. Um, oh, uh, uh, Hughes, she runs past Hughes, so Hughes gonna use his reaction to try to okay. hit her. Uh, so Hughes is going to make, gosh, what does he have anything except spells? Because he don't, th I don't think he has Warcaster. Does he? Uh, uh, I don't think so. One second, stand by, stand by. No, nah, he don't. Oh yeah, no, he does. He don't. Um, so he does not have Warcaster. So he is going to just try to like, just, just try to punch her. Um, <laughs> that's all I can do. Uh, and he misses. So he goes to like just punch, and he just whiffs, and he goes no. And she jumps, and she she makes the dexterity save to land. She has the crate. Oh no. Uh. Uh, with her athletics, she got a nineteen. So she just. <laughs> lands on the skiff uh and then that's the end of her turn because the shove was her action and then she like had enough movement to pick up and like have half speed to get and jump um okay. that's how like the like yeah. economy i've used it yeah. uh now it's the bandit's turn and that bandit who's who's driving it they slow down a little bit they pull away and they start to go off in the different in, in a different direction uh it is your turn and they're moving so fast to where it, you really have the rest of this round until they're kind of out of. Uh, would I be able to run and jump and make it? You can certainly try. Yeah. <laughs> you give that a shot. Would that be an athletics check? That would be an athletics check. Okay. Yes. I'm going to, I'm going to run. I'm going to say, I'm going to real quickly look at Hugh and say, is that worth it? Uh, you just look. Yes. 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 Okay. Um, I, I'm going to full Leonidas uh, and <laughs> uh, I'm going to like try and jump and uh, yes, I'm going to try and jump and I'll make an athletics check to, or I guess, will I make an athletics check? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Roll an athletics check. Okay. Oh. Okay. Uh, a 15. A 15. Just enough. Uh, so you just in like slow motion in the air, moving, and you just kind of like land there on the skiff with them. You're there. Do I? Is that? Do I have my action still? That's. I'm gonna say that's your, that was yeah. your movement. Okay. You just say that's my movement. That was your movement. So you have okay. your action bonus action. I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to attack. Am I near? The, the, yeah. This little skiff oh, is like. Tiny thing? It's basically like uh, 15 feet long. I'm going to attack. I'm gonna hit real hard. Okay. Hopefully on uh usc yeah uh, uh unnatural 20. oh hell yeah i uh, roll for damage okay when oh, i get to re-roll with both of these i love that that's so cool that's 13 points of damage 13 points of damage uh, yeah, yeah yeah leonidas Ooh. how's it happen oh uh uh i land and i go Give me the fucking crate, uh, and I, uh, and I, uh, I swipe and 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 slash the other way, so it's like an X in in uh, Ulysses' face of mm -hmm. uh, the two slices that I've made. All right, yeah, you just and you just see the just like the whole bottom 
of her face is just blood and she just like kind of like goes down and just like crumbles to the ground what about uh, the other one the other one just goes oh, just like and just like just says take it take it take it take it fine uh and i pick up the crate am i an initiative still uh so he basically he stopped it yeah let's just say initiative's over because that guy's not getting they're minions right. he's like just take it uh, like bring me back uh, go back to the thing oh uh, so i don't have to jump he just kind of like like the your barge is still moving towards the thing he goes oh, yeah, yeah okay okay uh he like pushes ulysses okay. crumpled body to the off and like onto the sand uh and opens the sails and just <clears throat> and goes and like pulls up next to it as you guys are going and you guys are like cl closing in on that opening um i take the crate and i say leave and then i uh i i walk i jump over to the other one with the crate and i get onto the other on the main one the minute you're off this thing does a hard u-turn and just goes back towards ulysses body cool. um and uh you guys then as like basically like only like 10 seconds after you get on and he's he like is just relieved like oh my god I, are you are you are you all right i told you not to worry well, I was stressed, um, and that was uh, quite exhilarating. Did um, you know her? I did not. I think I know of the people she works for. Um, she's, uh, I believe, a member of uh, the Longhorn game. Uh, they're just a group of bandits who I've uh, hired in the past, mistakenly, and uh, they are greedy. So, um, and now you guys are finally whoosh, into the crevice, the crevice, uh, and Curdy, like Curdy and Kazzy are kind of like fixing things up, like checking in on you. Um, and, uh, Hugh says, you, um, you did a good job. Uh, that, that was impressive. Thank you. I, I, like I said to you, I've um, done that before. I understand you're looking for some individuals. However, are, are you in need of work or a place to stay in Camden Mesa? Well, I would like to find them. And to be honest with you, I'd like to know what's in your crate. I do think I deserve that, considering that I think we might be looking for similar things. And I can give you more information once we get there. Yes. But I'd like to see what's in your crate. Um, I agree. I save it. No, um, and this incident, uh, I think I can trust you more than the average cell sold. Mm -hmm. So I think that we can, I have, I can help you with your problem if you help me with mine. Okay. Oh, that, that easy? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, I'm just not used to that. Uh, all right, well, uh, I have a place to stay in Camden Mesa that you are welcome to. And my sister and I are looking for talented individuals. Okay. All right, so it's, uh, it's a deal then. And he clasps your hand and shakes it. Uh, he's like, it will be a pleasure working with you Mr. Leonidas. As to you. And the barge continues forward. The camera pans up and you see Camden Mesa in the distance oh. over these gorges. And that's where we'll end your session. What's up? Yeah. That was cool. All right, <laughs> All right everybody. Uh, so we're going to take a, a, a 15 minute break to potty and everything and reset and and 15 get a snack and in 15 minutes we will be right back with senior will champion, will champion. playing Callias mirror
All right. Hey, everybody, welcome back. Uh, we are now in our part two of our one on ones. Uh, so we just finished Leonidas Goldspear, the second one on one with uh, Dan Crackhart. And then now we are beginning uh, Callias Mears one on one, played by my wonderful friend, Will Champion. And I always start, Will, you have any announcements you'd like to make? Anything you'd like to say? <laughs> Uh, not really, other than I'm uh, uh, just ready and geared up to go. Sweet. All right. Well, cool. All right. So then uh, without further ado, uh, the camera pans down. Drip. 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 You find yourself thankful for the wet season coming early this year. In addition, you also find yourself thankful for this small outcropping of rocks and roots that you have huddled yourself under to keep dry as the storm passes. You aren't sure how long you've been sheltered here. The roar and thunder and flashes of the passing monsoon made time seem out of focus and loose. The only thing that really rising hunger in your stomach. You stare out of your shelter. You see the rain dripping off this leaf start to slow over time. And that tells you as that the storm has passed. You think any tracks that would have led to you have washed away in this storm and a wave of relief from because of that washes over you. But immediately followed is a wave of shame, of fear. You find yourself thinking if trackers would be sent by now. But you get the sense that you really don't want to wait here to find out. You need to go somewhere, but you don't know where. The only thing you do know is that you need to get away from where you are, away from them. So as you crawl out of your shelter and peek out, Will, could you please give us a word picture of what Callias looks like? Callias stands not too tall, not too short, slight, in build, very slight, sharp, long features, both in body and a face. Um, they are pale, though their skin is tinged with green, um, closer to the color of a, the frothing sea than the deep jungle. They're young, um, sort of inscrutably young, hard to tell. Uh, their face looks inexperienced, but their hands and the calluses on them belie uh, work in the outdoors. Their eyes that twinkle out from under the very rough shod, hewn, uh, deep gray cloak, complete with a hood now pulled quite far over their forehead. Uh, their eyes twinkle this bright yellow green color. Uh, and though they may appear somewhat gangly for their five foot nine frame, they are well adjusted to their limbs by this point, though the rest of them, perhaps they are not, not perhaps as well adjusted to living in their own skin as others of their age. All right. You step out and just breaking through the canopy of the jungle you see the sunlight come in and hit your eyes and it, it it's a little painful, but uh, it's a bright, bright day after the storm has passed. What do you do? Can I get a sense of which directions are where? Like, am I facing north beyond just the sun? 
Mm -hmm. uh, it's the canopy's a little thinner here, but still pretty thick to really get uh, some good bearings. Uh, you could roll a survival check to see if you can like maybe get a bearing or uh, you can also, there's, if you can maybe find a vantage point, you could be able to get your bearings through there as well. Okay. Okay, then that's, that's I think, the most important thing. Okay. Getting somewhere higher. Okay. Uh, roll me a perception check. That's a nine. Nine? Nine. Well, you don't have to look far. <laughs> uh, you actually, the, the tree, the roots you were hiding under um, belong to a very large uh, mangrove-esque tree that just reaches up and twisting branches all the way up to the top of the canopy and you get the sense that you could probably get a good vantage point up in this tree. I'd like to climb it or at least try to climb it, but I've, I've got to make, I've got to make sure it doesn't come at the cost of alerting anyone of my position. Okay. Uh, roll me a survival check then. That's better. That's a 19. 19? Dope. Uh, so you're able to kind of like look around this tree. There doesn't seem to be many animals or birds uh, within this large mango tree at the moment. So if you were to disturb anything, it wouldn't be a lot. Uh, so you get the sense that this uh, tree would be pretty, pretty safe to go up into. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're going to go for it. Uh I'm not going to have you roll for this one. Uh, I think you just, you climbed mm -hmm. trees your whole life. So I think you get pretty good at just climbing this tree, just taking your time. Um, so you take time to get all the way up. Uh, and as you kind of get to the top of this one branch and pull yourself up, you crest the canopy and you get kind of a lay of the land. To your south, you see the easternmost peninsula uh, of Fidicilas. Uh, kind of to, yeah, mostly to your north, but a little bit to your northwest, you see the interior lake and mm. the island of Olakos. Okay. Uh, you would know that y your raft that you took here would be on the western side of the island on the western peninsula, which is you, when the storm was coming through and you were running through this jungle, you kind of lost track and ended up on the other side of the island. Uh, there's a coast pretty close to you if you're just to go east. Uh, uh, so you have your raft. I'm looking at my map over here. Uh, you have your ra the raft that you know is to the w to the west. The island of Alakos, the interior island of Alakos, to your north. And then the one thing that does catch your eye is you see all the way down the southern tip of the eastern peninsula, you see a bit of smoke rising. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Uh, can I get... Does it look like I can get comfortably or at least fairly swiftly to the western side of the aisle while avoiding getting anywhere close to uh, the border lake of Olakos? Mm, yeah, you could... It would. There's one moment where you do get pretty close to um, the lake of Olakos. Uh but you could maybe skirt around it. Uh, I will say the, just to be clear, the fire at the Southern tip of mm. the Eastern peninsula is out of place. Cause you know that there is an annex sort of temple there uh, oh. that, that exists, but right. it wouldn't be used. So it's, you do find it a little curious. Okay. Okay. Uh, I am going to have to at least try and skate close to that, both to sate my own curiosity and to see if they maybe have a better vessel than mine. Okay. Um, yeah, because there's just kind of a small little like outrigger yeah. raft yeah, yeah, yeah. moment. Uh, okay. Uh, so you climb down the tree. Uh, your feet land on the soft earth of the jungle floor and you head out. Uh, I want you to roll me a, a survival and are you moving stealthily? Yeah, I'm gonna certainly try to. Okay, absolutely. Um, so you make your way through and you move your way through the jungle and you don't spend a lot of time at this Eastern Peninsula. 
uh, you never really have. It's kind of an area you maybe would go to hunt every once in a while, um, but it's uh, a little less uh, populated by trees as you continue down it. Uh, as you get closer, you get you sm start to smell the smoke as well, and it seems to be it's not like a nat like it's it smells like something's getting burnt and has some sort of an accelerant to it. Mm. Uh, you make your way down and you've kind of crest over this one cliff that then leads down to the lower, the lowlands of this peninsula. Uh, after a couple hours of moving through the jungle, uh, roll me a perception check. Perception that is a 22. Shoot. All right. Uh, with that 22, you're able to kind of make out uh, the temple area. You see, there are figures. Um, some of them, you don't really can't really tell like they're far away you, you just see like people mm -hmm. uh and you see a ship that has been beached over kind of to the um eastern shore which is uh the eastern shore is open to the ocean uh okay yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so that so it's a, it's a large it's kind of a the look of the ship is a long ship style kind of a large like between a long ship and a sailing ship. Okay. So, but sizable enough to be holding, you'd, you'd need more than one person operating it. At least, you, it looks like, you're not super knowledgeable about ships, sure. but you look at it and you're like, that's bigger than a raft. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Not a canoe. Not, not a canoe. Hey, that, that's not a canoe. But it, <laughs> nice. It, so you get the sense that it doesn't seem like there's not a lot of people moving around down there. But definitely, one person would have a tough time sailing in it. Sure. It's like the in Pirates of the Caribbean, the the boat that Captain Jack is first on. That right, it sinks. Right. Yeah, it's like that size kind of thing. Okay, uh, and there are a good number of them here. You said right. Uh, with your perception check, I'm going to say you count. Uh, a, I'm going to say at least. Let me just check my notes really quick. Uh. At least three. At least. Um, yeah, you, you, it, it's still far enough away. Like it's a good another, you're on this cliff, so you have a vantage point. Once you are able to get down and go there, it's going to take another hour of walking, I would say. But it's kind of within, just within your um, eyesight. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And from this distance, I can't tell what kind of species these people are. No, you cannot. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. From this distance. Uh, well, I've got to get closer and I don't want to be seen. Really, okay. really. All right. So then I would ask you to roll me a uh, stealth check. Nice. That's a 22 again. Oh my God. Holy shit. <laughs> okay. So you, you bury like, you know, you know, the jungle. It is a comfortable place for you. You spent your whole life hunting in the jungle. So you're able to kind of like easily make your way down the rock cliff, the rock face. It's not, it's not super sheer. So you're able to kind of like jump down and move down from like large outcropping to large outcropping and get all the way down. Uh, this lower area is less trees, maybe a bit more bamboos. You're, you know this area a little bit, even more sand. So it's quiet and you're just making your way through towards the temple. Um, You get to her kind of, you're at least like maybe within a, a few hundred yards of the temple. And I want you to roll me a perception check to see what you hear. That's a 19. 19? Okay. Um, nice rolls tonight. Yeah, Jeez. This is good. This, uh, is good. <laughs> this is a good sign. Uh, you hear a large male gruff voice, one that you do not recognize uh, barking orders. Uh, what languages do you speak? Uh, not common. Mm. Okay. Uh, so uh, what, do, what do you speak though? I speak uh, elven, uh, primordial, sylvan, and draconic. Okay. Uh, all right. With those languages, you uh, do not know what they're saying at all. Great. Uh, you just hear it just sounds like orders like uh, and you really can't make out what the words are uh, 
but it seems to be a lot of activity coming in through the, the few tree branches and the bamboo, mm -hmm. uh, but you can't really tell what. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, can I see what they're doing necessarily? Yeah. Uh, you can move up a little bit closer. I'm gonna see if any of them keeping watch notice you, but you are really well hidden, so we'll see. Oh, uh, I guess I do. I I misspoke. I can kind of like understand common. I definitely cannot speak it. Okay. I can I can like um, hear bits of it, but not. Uh, much. you okay? So I'm gonna say like you can the broken common that yeah. you understand, uh, is a bit of like, uh, put the jewels over there. Uh, that crate gets burned. Uh. Oh that's that's her gear throw it away so, so it's it looks like that take are they taking things and, uh, or trading things like what's 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 the movement to and from you are need to get a bit closer okay to find out okay. you're just within earshot right now um mm -hmm. but you you can move closer and let's see if any of them notice you um what was your stealth check again the earlier one yeah it was a 22 20, yeah, so I'm gonna keep that one because um, you're just kind of yeah. you're not really like changing what you're doing. You're just yeah. moving forward. Uh, you get to this kind of uh, small, like a few boulders that come up a little hill that kind of looks down onto where you know the temple is, and you kind of like just nestle into it, looking over. Uh, you see, there is this one individual. Uh, seems to be. Uh, do you have any dwarves in your village? Would you say? I would say we may have seen a couple that have come through. Yeah. I don't think there are any permanent dwarves yeah. here. So you see there's one dwarf who is uh, ha is bald and just a, a big, thick red beard, the beard that's braided together. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's the one barking out orders, telling all, like, uh, mostly humans, maybe a couple halflings. Uh, it's about, I would say, all together, about seven people. Uh and you see them like barking out and they're actually going into this kind of, it's a, one of those circular temples, uh, very much like like the Oracle of Delphi temple looking thing. Uh, they're going into it and they're bringing out all of the tribute and the riches that have been brought there over the years. Uh, so these large bronze and gold and silver plates, these um, chests of jewels uh, and uh, you see them kind of like putting them in a pile ready to get put on the ship. And then you see there's a smaller pile of stuff that a person's going through. And next, um, next to that pile is a bamboo cage that has been made. And you see a woman uh, just kind of like lean, like sitting down, hands tied. Like you see her kind of looking around trying to figure out what to do. You've never seen these people in your life. Uh, these are strangers to the islands. Okay. 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 How far removed is the cage from the action? Um, so if, if it's a circle and the, let's say the boat is to the east, she's a little bit to the south, uh, southwest-ish kind of area with the cage, um, kind of between the boat and the temple. Uh, on, and then kind of Across from her, between the boat and the temple, is a couple tents. Seems that like they've been here for a couple days. Uh, there's some tents, and uh, the guy barking out orders is kind of just like around those tents, telling where people where to put things. And okay. you're you're on the temples here, and you're on the other, the west side of the temple, looking over the temple to them. Okay, okay. I. Oh no. And I've known this temple was here. Yeah, this is a yeah. place that I, yeah. It's a temple that like you've brought tribute to yeah. every once in a while. And uh, maybe uh, one of the younger, you've seen a couple initiations, you know, happen here. Mm -hmm. It's it's kind of used once in a while yeah. for certain days, um, certain full moons. You can uh, come and use it. Uh, this is not gonna go. This is not gonna stand in the long run, at least, but I don't want to be here. So I... I'm going to try and see if I can get down and around within like seeing distance uh, of the cage. 
I okay. want to see what that is. Yeah. Uh, roll me. So this is a new stealth check. Roll yep. me a new stealth check for this one. Okay. Sure thing. Oh. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. That is going to be a six. <laughs> um, so very, very akin to like Assassin's Creed Black Flag. You're moving in on the camp. <laughs> Um, and at one point, you just a little bit in like line of sight, and the little ping pops up in the corner of your screen, uh, and it just gets yellow. Like you just know, yeah. like somebody's like goes, huh? Uh, the one who's kind of going through those boxes next to the cage, kind of like hears like a stick break and looks your way, and kind of starts making his way towards you. And you see the as you're closer, you're kind of like ducked in the tall grass. You see uh, through it just barely the woman kind of turn around and you get a better look of her. She has uh, frizzy hair pulled back into a bun. Uh, she has this dark brown skin and wearing these leathers. Uh, you do notice these white lines all over her, um, all over her arm. She's just kind of wearing like some like elbow length leathers. Uh, and the biggest thing you notice about her is she has these two golden eyes, almost like a, when she looks your way, they catch the light and they reflect almost like a, a wolf type thing. Uh, and she, you see her also kind of look in your direction too. And this individual starts kind of moving towards the grass. You, you see him, he holds a spear. Mm -hmm. and he's kind of looking towards the grass. Has not seen you yet. Uh, if he's going to move, I'm going to try and back away. Mm -hmm. But uh, otherwise, I'm going to uh, stay very still. Okay. I think. He kind of steps just like on the other side of the cage and looks around and uh, roll me a stealth check with advantage since you're just kind of like, you're not moving. Yeah. That's much better. Uh, that's going to be a 21. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, 20. Oh, even like that's, yep, you're good. <laughs> uh, roll them 11. So uh, you seem kind of look around and you hear that uh, same voice go, oh yeah, dar and head on. And just kind of, you just, yavin, yavin, and uh, walks back towards those crates. Uh, moment passes and you hear a voice in your head. First, it doesn't understand, you don't understand it and it starts switching and like it almost knows that this voice, female voice switches a language and speaks. You said you speak, what exactly again? I speak uh, with at least conversational ability, uh, elven, draconic, primordial and sylvan. Okay, uh, switches through, like you hear a common for a second and you hear just kind of like, it's like a greeting uh, and then it switches to another one, uh, and it's Elvin. And she, it's a female voice, and you look over, and you see the woman in the cage, like, direct eye contact with you. Mouth not moving. Right. And you hear the voice in your head, and she says, can you help me? I... Uh, I will try. If you help me. Then, and she, and you, like she kind of looks around and she says, that, that's a deal. If you can get me out of this cage, we can get out. And I'll, I'm happy to help you. Uh, I'll owe you a favor. What's going on here? She see her, she like kind of looks around. <laughs> Again, beads on you and just in the voice in your head. I came here to achieve an artifact. I simply wanted to take one thing. I hired this group. They saw that I only wanted one tablet and they decided that the riches were enough of a reward to turn against me. So they locked me up and they have started sacking this temple. I assume you are a native here? You could say so, yes. Right. So, help me, help you. Let's get, keep this temple safe and get me out of here 
All I need is my tablet, and I know how to get out of here. Fine, as long as you're sure that you can get out. All right. Are you any good at fighting? M no, maybe. Uh, depends. Uh, so you kind of look around a little frustrated and... Uh, uh, okay, I have a sword over there and like the dude that's kind of going through those uh, boxes and crates. If you can retrieve it for me, I can, we could probably take out the captain. If we take out the captain, the rest will follow. Okay. Okay, okay. Just uh, get me my sword and get me out of here and I can help with the rest. If you have the sword, can you get out of the cage yourself or do you need help with that? My hands are a little tied, so I would need a little help with that. Okay, okay, yes, yes. Uh, sword. Sword first. <laughs> All right, uh, so you're just kind of directly to the south of the cage in some tall grasses. The, uh, the crates that the one dude is looking at is just a little bit over to the east of you, like between the cage and the shoreline. So it's a little in the open, um, but it is kind of over to the side. Uh, in terms of footage, mm -hmm. how far away are we talking? Oh, maybe 40 feet. Okay. I'd love to, w still within cover, try and get 10 feet closer to the pile of stuff. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say let's keep your last because it's still kind of the same uh, stealth activity. So we'll use your last mm -hmm. one. We're going to see if the person going through the crates notices you. <laughs> Roll to seven. Hell no. Uh, so you kind of get up and you're like, you're like, you kind of get your shoulder up against the, the uh, cage and you see this um, woman who, a uh, decently young uh, female, uh, seemingly human except for the slight, like, sharper cheekbones and golden eyes. Uh, uh, she just kind of looks like, pretends like she's not, doesn't notice you, but you're kind of up against the back of her. I would say you're about 10 feet away from the crates. 10 feet away. Is the guy still rooting through? Yeah, he doesn't, he seems to not notice you. He's like, he like picks up a crate and like says like, uh, uh, you're hiding, fellow. And the captain just kind of goes, ah, falsch den Uh And he goes, da, and just walks over and sets it down to some other stuff and then kind of moseys on back by that time, but does not notice you. Okay, okay. Does it look like he's gonna make another movement? Uh, yeah, he's just kind of going through. Like he like goes through a box, asks captain if he wants is it wants it, and then the captain will answer. So you can maybe wait for the next box to happen. Okay. While mm -hmm. I'm waiting for the next box to happen, I'm going to uh, hold hold my right wrist, just mm -hmm. sort of like this, and just breathe a little bit and flex my fingers and try and cast my mage hand okay um mage hand is a level one spell or can mage oh, hand for... is a cantrip okay cool uh so you just kind of like center yourself and you like it's more of like you're like i need to grab that sword and you, you can <laughs> see it it's just leaning up against yeah. one of the crates uh it's this like just this very thinly curved scimitar uh and not really like being new to your newfound powers you just see it kind of move for a second and then this like spectral scaled hand reaches out and wraps its fingers around it okay come here come here come here and like the hand almost in a slithering like fashion takes the hilt of the sword and goes kink, and drags through the sand and it stops when you when you say Shh. And it makes its way towards you. And finally to where it's just about, just about like maybe three feet from you. And the hand brings it in right next to you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And the hand just kind of like moves and just like flicks its, like it, it just kind of moves almost snake-like. Right. Uh, if he's still not paying attention to me, I'm gonna try and just gingerly take it and get, 
uh, turn over to the woman in the cage. And if she's looking at me, I'm going to message her. Oh, you have message as a spell? As a country Lit. Uh, hold, hold out your wrist. Uh, she sees you and she just kind of like puts her arms behind her. Like she's stretching and like puts it like to like where you can see right. there's these like hempen ropes with her wrists bound. I'm going to try and you said it's a scimitar, right? It's not, it's just, it's more of a slashing than a, than like yeah, a, more of a, more of a slashing. Yeah. So I'm going to basic try and like as surreptitiously as I can slide the blade through the, the bars and like, yes. And like, she just is like, like try and to like play it off. Uh, at this point, the guy take a crate over and he's starting to come back. Uh, let's see if he notices. Um, roll me a stealth check for the 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 like the tap, tap, tap. yeah the cutting. That's a twenty two again. Eighteen is my oh, magic shoot. roll. Jeez, those dice. Uh, yeah, so he doesn't notice. Doesn't notice the sword gone either. Uh, just is tired and wants to go get off an island. Great. Uh, you're and so you're able to like just get her wrists free. And she just kind of slowly brings him back down, keeping her wrists together. And she just kind of looks kind of back towards you and just nods. And then you see her kind of move her hand behind her and like, like motion for her sword. I will as deftly as I can without cutting myself or her, get the hilt into her hands. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're pretty easy. It's not a super heavy sword. So you're able to kind of like maneuver it in the back. It's not super, it's not sharp on the back. It's a, it's a one-sided, almost cutlass, like a thin cutlass. Sure. Uh, and like you're able to kind of just like put it in her hands and she just kind of like has it and lays it down behind her. Um, and she says, okay, now what's the plan? What? You you were the one with the plan? Yes. I thought you had the tablet. I, I've given you the, the sword. I don't have a plan. I need to no. leave. No, 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 no. You don't have to leave. You don't have to leave. No, 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 no. I just didn't think we'd get this far. Okay. We can figure it out. Okay, where is the, can you? Okay. What do you need now? If we, I can get out of this cage, we can either stay and fight and try to take out the captain, or if you know anything about boats, we could maybe sail and like, she kind of like looks over towards that long ship that's a little beached. We can maybe move quick enough to where we can get out and leave them here on the island. I would like if at least the captain was gone, they are not being particularly kind to our island here. But if it looks like it's going to be trouble, then maybe we should go. Okay, well, it's going to be trouble. So what, what do you want to stay and just charge the captain then? Is that how you're feeling? Where is your tablet? Um, she looks around and uh, you see, her, I think, and points over, there's uh, one of the tents. There's like three tents set up. The one on the far right, kind of close to the shore, you see it's kind of the storage tent. And she says, it's probably, I believe, in there. I believe I saw them put it in there in a crate. I... I will try and get to the tablet for you. If I can get it without being noticed and bring it back to you, then we make a break for it. If it gets nasty at all, then maybe... Maybe then you come and uh, assist perhaps yeah yeah that works for me okay um, can i maybe roll an inside check uh yeah you absolutely can insight not my strong suit not my strong suit that's a nine a nine as far as you can tell she's telling the truth she's like on board she's, she's like you see her like her yeah sounds less of like a yeah <laughs> and more of like a just she's taking it in. Just, yes. Right. Yes. I can. All right. Yeah. 
okay okay um like it looks like she's like just trying to like clock every person and know where they are in relation to her and the captain okay um let's do this then what does it look like um there is a group of them heading to the temple right now when they get in probably your best chance because there are only be about four of them there with the captain well, the captain included four so of them. The, okay it's, it's the the three and then the captain the, the the only person you really need to worry about is the captain so. okay okay uh i'll be back i hope and then i'm going okay. to get low and you, you before you leave, she's like, um, do you have a, do you have like a, uh, like tits up word? Like if something goes bad, like a, a alarm? Help. Is that, does that work? <laughs> she kind of goes, oh yeah, 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 I guess that works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Help, help it is. Yes. Yeah. Uh, if you need it, then you say it as well. But I, uh, I, you'll know if I need it. Right. And she just just kind of like gives you a very very small nod, just trying to like be as like sly as possible and not yeah. show that she's talking to somebody. Uh, great. And I will Skyrim crouch, <laughs> and <laughs> and go. I guess. Okay. Uh, how are you gonna go? Like just like through the beachhead? Are you gonna go or back around and make make a long circle back around? Or I you think gonna I'm gonna try and make a long circle back around. Um, yeah, yeah. All right, it takes, I would say it's it's a bigger clearing, so it takes to like sneakily get it around. It's going to take about 10 minutes. And could you roll me a stealth check? Another mm. one. Ooh, that's a 12. <laughs> the sorcerer is sneaking around. <laughs> um, it You are far away enough, so I'm going to say go ahead and make it with advantage. You're not like, you're not like behind them moving. I mean, if it's with advantage, that's a 21. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, it's because you're not you're not like you're going around to like yeah. give the distance to make it easier. So that's why I give advantage. Uh all right, yeah. Uh they nobody really seems to see you. They're kind of busy getting their work done. Uh you make your way around to the other side of the tents and you're about ten feet in the back of the tents. Again, there's that kind of that tallish grass you're able to kind of hunker down in. Uh and you see there's two dudes just kind of moving boxes around by the tents. Uh, and the the captain at this moment is uh, kind of near, like not in, but near, closer to the temple. So kind of off to your right. Okay. Uh, off to my right and there by the tents, are they? And the boat is to your left. The boat is to my right. Okay. Uh, I am going to try. And again, just sort of focusing on that weird, like ozone feeling that has come with these new powers i'm going to try and focus on the area nearer the of tall grass is there tall grass sort of near the near the yeah. tent closer but, to the guys yeah you're kind of in some of that tall grass but there's there's tall grass all over so you can have your pick i'm going to try and focus on the tall grass nearer the two people with the crates by the tents i'm going to try and focus on just that sound of a conspicuous twig snapping and <laughs> Cast, press the digitation. Cool, and it's, it's just like a, yeah, just simply uh, as simple as it gets. Okay, I want you to roll me a deception check, uh, and I believe you add your charisma anyway. So you, all right, there's no I difference. Do. So just a, a deception check, straight, straightforward. That's a nine again. A nine all together. Oh, roll the three. So. <laughs> nice oh so we're good so you kind of hear you do the and again the exclamation point mark pops up and goes huh and you hear him go oh, skin and father school hey scan school there and like one goes bashkin and like goes over and heads over and one has gone over to go check, like, and like, is like over to like the other side of the tents, looking through, like, like looking at the grass. Okay. Uh, okay, then I'm gonna try and get as close as I can. Uh, I'm gonna try and get as close as I can to the entrance of the tent that I need to get into. 
mm -hmm. uh, keeping my eyes on the um, on the other individual, the other patroller. Yep. Mm -hmm. Uh, is does it looking like he's staying around that tent? Is yeah, there no swing? Yeah, you. So you kind of like peek over, and he's just right now crouched over a crate, like like looking at these like gold things, kind of like just like marveling at them. Uh, okay. But his bat, he's crouched down, bat like facing towards the woman in the cage, and so his back's to you and the tent as well. Okay. Kind of going through this crate. Then I'm going to. Again, just hone in on that that crackling sensation, and just stare at the back of this person's head, and cast message in draconic. Okay, what do you say in draconic? <laughs> you are trespassing. <laughs> uh, you 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 hear him kind of like shoot. What was that? Uh, and you hear him kind of yell out to the um, his buddy, like, and he says, uh, the other guy, he's like, Schfaden! Skull, Falden! And the guy just goes, ah, school and toss. Uh, and he's like, school and Falden! Uh, and like, he goes, Khan, Khan! And like, goes towards the captain. Brilliant. Uh, uh, as soon as he's up, I'm gonna like uh, hurry in there. Okay, roll me as because now you're going into the open. A lot of stealth checks, but it's just like another yeah, no, phase I... of it. So mm -hmm. roll like to get into it. Roll me a stealth check, man. Uh, Sixteen. Sixteen. All right. Let's see if they notice you. Captain does not notice you as he turns around and looks at his his uh, crewmate. Uh, he's like. Oh, Skulten Fagelstad and and like is like like yelling at him for being a dummy. Uh, basically, like it's the like this place is cursed. <laughs> Excellent, great, great. <laughs> um, and you have been able to sl are now able to slip in to the tent area. Okay. What's what it, what's um, in there? You look around and there's like all the jewels some of them you even recognize of like from people who've come to the islands and you've like taken their stuff and or they've, do they've donated it to be able to keep moving on stuff like that you've been able to like you recognize some of it uh rolling if you're looking for the tablet yeah. and specifically which you don't you don't recall the tablet uh roll me a uh investigation check i'm definitely looking for the tablet i'm also looking for anything that specifically reminds me of the village Okay, yeah, totally. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so investigation, you said? Uh, yes, investigation. Investigation, that is a 19. A 19, okay. Uh, that is high enough to get like an extra thing. Uh, so <laughs> I had like three tiers of like, yeah. you get this or this or this. Uh, <laughs> with that, you are able to find this kind of wrapped in this like uh, burlap sort of like sack and tied with this rope and like a cross section is uh, uh, some sort of flat um, item, pretty heavy. Doesn't really feel like metal or anything like that. You can't really see into it, but it seems tablet-y. Mm -hmm. uh, you can open it up to see if it actually is it. Uh, you also, with that, you the two things that you find uh, and the, the two things, one is like a jade sort of uh, armband that is mm -hmm. like a two-headed snake uh, and like the they're interlocking their mouths so like like they're kissing but it's like it's it's an armband that you slide up and it's like a jade of two snakes like almost like an uh, uh, Ouroboros. Perfect. Um, so it's, it looks kind of like that but it's this pretty jade armband. Uh, the other one is this pendant uh, and it is this these two out like bronze outstretched eagle wings okay mm -hmm. great uh i'm gonna pocket the pendant 
and slide the armband up my left arm. Uh, is it like a forearm one or is it uh, like an like upper a, arm? Yeah, it's an yeah. upper arm one. I'll it's put it the, right. Uh, yeah. I'm, Destiny I'm, Warlock yeah, bond or whatever. Bond. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to put the, uh, the serpent band around my left, uh, left arm. Yeah. And then I don't. If this thing is the only thing that like even feels vaguely tablety in here, then yeah, I would say as you look like with that high up check, like everything else is like open and like it's just like gold pieces, like jars, like like it's the only thing that really seems to fit that uh, description. Sure. Uh, mm -hmm. Brief question before I go mm -hmm. looking for this. Uh, based on when I left, would I have like a quiver full of arrows or like a half quiver full of arrows? Yeah, I would say at least a half. Like I would say a like ten arrows. Like a, I think cool. in my head, like a quiver is twenty arrows. I'm yeah. gonna say you have ten. Great. If there are yeah. any like arrows around, I would love to snag them at any point. Um, um, but okay. Beyond uh, that. Oh okay, yeah. I mean, there's maybe some near the ship. Maybe. Okay. Cool. Uh, but you don't like. You don't. You don't see any in like the treasure tent that yeah. you're in right now. Uh, then I would love to uh, snag the burlap bag uh okay. and get the hell out of dodge okay. uh so you have it and do you go just straight towards the woman in the cage or what do you do i'm gonna try and keep uh sneaking around i really don't have any faith okay um i need you i gonna just try to do another, another loop around yep it worked okay. before All i right. mean on peering through the tent like just through the flap of it is there anyone immediately in my sort of short line of sight? Uh, as you peer out after like like searching through and like finding the armband, putting it on, and like like there may be like twenty seconds it took to mm. do all that, uh, you are hearing the yelling from the captain, and as like you kind of peer out, the captain stops and just like uh, like just is yelling at the dude who's thought everything was cursed, and he turns around and starts walking back towards you, but kind of head down, not really paying too much attention. Uh, can I see him? Yeah. Oh, you can see him. Yeah. Uh, then I'm going to message him again. <laughs> I'm going to message him again and reach out again in, in, in Draconic. This is your final warning, intruder. <laughs> again, roll me a deception check with advantage against this guy. <laughs> okay that would be a 17 17 okay with that 17 uh let's see how it goes hey oh roll the six um so you see him kind of go and he just kind of keeps his head down and he just see you just see him kind of like circle his chest and like give a little prayer <laughs> uh <laughs> And uh, you see him just kind of go over, like, look around and he just goes into, like, maybe, you don't know what tent it is, but, like, the middle tent mm. just kind of ducks into it. Uh, and you hear some rummaging going on in there. Okay, then I'm going to use that. As soon as I can see him peel away, I'm trying to yeah. get out. Okay. So you peel out, you move around. I need you to roll me another stealth check. This time, uh, there's more people. They're coming out yeah. of the temple with a bunch of stuff. So it's going to be with disadvantage. Or not, not it's just it's just straight, not disadvantage. I'm uh, sorry. That's a 14. 14? You're a lucky son of a bitch. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> uh, so you, there's like a couple really close calls. Is like, you're kind of near like the one part near to the temple. And you're about to step out and you hear like a, <laughs> and skulls bothered. And they're like, ah, yeah, yeah. And like laughing at each other, like, <gasps> like behind a tree, like the one tree that's there, just like holding this tablet. Uh, and you make your way back up, back around, and you make it back where there's the one dude again going through uh, the woman in the her her stuff, uh, and you see her just kind of staying there, like sitting there, and like as you get close, you uh, like she whispers under her breath, actually in Elvin now, uh, did you get it? I'll just like nod and like gesture slyly towards the vague burlap sack. <laughs> Um, she kind of like peeks out and she's like, yeah, that's probably it. Uh, okay. Just make a break for the ship. Is that... Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
break for the ship that sounds uh, can, I can probably slow the captain down. Just get to the ship, hit the bow, and push. Okay. 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 On my count. One, two, three. And she like whips out her sword, stands up, slashes the cage, like the, the rope that were keeping the cage tied, and kicks it open. Uh, I need you to roll me initiative. Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Let me know when you're ready. All right. Give me two seconds. Hey, yo. Oh, my God. Uh, all right. Let me roll. Let me pull up the captain stuff. Look at you. You've been so good not using any leveled spell slots. So you haven't had, had to use your wild magic yet. <laughs> It's uh, that, that time is shortly approaching us. Yep, yeah, it's going to be close now. Uh, where am I? I'm sorry, just one moment and find it. Um, did I? I didn't get rid of it, did I? Ah, oh, there it is. Okay. All right. So, uh, okay. Ooh, so. Well, what'd you get, Will? I got a 14. A 14? That's not bad. Uh, okay. And so, and then he got, got a 16, got a 14, and then the crew got a 10. All right, so starting off the round is the woman in the cage. She kicks it open, and the first thing he does, she kind of like puts her leg out, and like she kind of like gives a little slice to the side of her thigh. Uh, and the blood just kind of sprays in the air. And it almost with the other hand, she like grabs it and pushes it towards him. And you see this dark energy just kind of try to grab at the captain's arms and like keep him in one spot. Uh, she does the blood curse of binding and the captain has to try to resist it. Um, all right. And I said, uh, and that's a, oh. Uh, damn. She reaches out and she like tries to cast it on and cast this uh, blood curse on him. And you see him like get pulled down a little bit and he just, these like dark red tendrils that are wrapped around his arms. He just, ah, skullfish dead and rips off uh, mm-hmm. the bindings that she made and like then pulls out this big old morning star that he has. Uh, okay. Uh, and, then, and you hear her go, Fuck and <laughs> bolt uh, towards okay. the uh, and the, boat. the boat's about sixty feet away from you, past yeah, the dude going through her, her stuff. Uh, all right, and now we go to it is the captain's turn. Uh, the captain is just kind of goes and like starts running. Uh, it'll run thirty feet, and I, so like I would say from you, he's about uh, fifteen feet away, uh, mm-hmm. and. From that, he takes out an axe. He doesn't see you yet, sees her, and throws a hand axe at her to try to hit her. And just like, it just like, boom, 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 like flings past her and just ping into the side of the boat. And you see her kind of look back as that's happening. Uh, now we go to your turn. Okay. I am going to see her ha- uh, have done whatever wildness that was, have it failed. So I'm gonna get up and sort of panic, just throw my hands in front of myself, just almost in like get, like a pushing motion, get away from me. Mm-hmm. And just with the, the energy rising up my spine, like the ozone before a storm, I'm gonna cast Chaos Bolt. <laughs> okay, uh, dope, all right. Uh, uh, it's a ranged spell attack or what is it? It's a ranged spell attack, yeah. Okay, roll for an attack then. Uh, and then also roll me for your wild magic table. Oh, okay. Uh, actually, actually, you're just gonna roll for it. What? Because I think it's something in wild magic where the, it's the, the, the DM's DM. discretion. Okay. And I think the first like active spell you're casting really. Okay. Okay. Uh, I see. Is is yeah. just a... um, just for story and to make me yeah. have fun. Let's do it. Great. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Let me roll the wild magic table then. <laughs> That'd be a 13. A 13? All right. Let's... Just to make sure the zero on the on the D10 is 10. And a hundred on how do you do hundreds on the uh, for me, a hundred would be zero zero zero. 
Okay, great. Yeah, great. Um, that's the uh, hundo for me. So give me sure. two seconds. I have a lot of things up. Okay, 13. Oh. No, don't do this to me. So you cast Chaos Bolt and uh, it flies. And what'd you, what'd you get on the roll? Oh, I haven't even caught. I just, uh, uh, let me do well, that. Well, after the spell, I'll tell you what happens. Okay, that's a uh, 18 on the ranged attack roll. 18. Okay, you absolutely hit. Roll for damage. Okay, so uh, 2d8 plus 1d6. Uh, Oh, so that's going to be literally, that's going to be force force damage. Mm -hmm. Uh, And that's going to be 11... Uh, wow, 17. Yeah, they take uh, 17 points of force damage. Oh, shit. Okay, wow. Yeah, you hit this guy like a truck. Uh, <laughs> and it just like, and like, you're so startled by all that energy coming out of you. You're stunned until your next turn. Okay. okay. That's 13, okay. 14 is you are stunned oh. until uh, the end of your next turn. <laughs> Uh, so you like that's what it was. Oh, I love this game. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, that was your turn. It's the crew. They uh, basically this turn like this guy. The guy there is like oh, uh, and like goes to, like look. He doesn't have his weapon. They're the closest guy to you, and the other guys are kind of off on the other side. Uh, he just kind of goes uh, and like starts running back to the middle tent um, to try to like grab a weapon. Uh, the one other thing you notice with on the cruise turn is the one dude who thought it was cursed comes out with a bag packed and like is confused and just starts bolting for the ship. Oh, uh, our but, ship? Yeah, the ship? Yeah, yeah right. the ship, but with right. his bag, his bag's okay. packed. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, <laughs> that's me. My, my fault also. Um, all right, cool, cool. Love that. Now we go back to uh, her turn. Uh, the woman, she like looks back at, like she's made it to the boat and she looks at you. Uh, and like by the end of her turn, like she could rest her movement, gets to the boat, looks back towards you, sees you just kind of like standing there, mouth agape. Uh, and you just, she just kind of goes, uh, she like turns around, pulls out a crossbow that she had like had uh, with her because she grabbed her stuff as she was running. Uh, just going to wreck on that. Uh, and she like leans her back up against the bow of the ship and starts pushing. And she's going to try and make a shot at the captain. Okay. Um, to try to cover. <laughs> so with her light crossbow, she's going to make a shot. Uh, 16. Let's see if that hits. Nope, nope. That's the wrong one. I always do the wrong one. There it is. 16 just hits. Hell yeah. Um, so... That is going to be a D8. Hell yeah. Oh, this is going to be good. Um, D8. Um, 11 plus 17. Uh, so she she turns around and she's just, and just the, as the guy got hit by this big chaos bolt by you, um, he like then looks towards her, like sees you, and then just kind of sees the, the like her and as he just turns towards her an arrow just into his head and he just slumps onto the ground uh and you both did so much damage to him uh (laughs) and all the crew goes scotland and like start grabbing their weapons and like are angry about it uh but he's he's down on the ground so uh that's cora's turn she starts she's gonna start to try to push the boat um and then now we go to your turn. Uh, I'm gonna be a, 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 actually no, you are stunned for this turn. So you lose your turn. Uh, so you just like, you like just see everything happen. And like, at, by the end of it, you're like, oh, and like, where do I go? Maybe to go to- back towards right. the boat. I definitely turn cruise, towards the boat. <laughs> yeah, the cruise turn. Uh, by that, the other guy who's like running towards the boat has his back. You see him kind of like swing it, throw it into the boat. And then you, uh, he just kind of looks at Cora and just puts his hands up and helps push the boat with her because uh, he just oh. wants to get off the island. <laughs> uh, and the crew, the rest of the crew are the there's about six of them are now like ah, and like are like coming out of the tent with their weapons and running towards the boat. And probably the next turn they'll make it within like at least range of the boat. Um, but right. you are you are technically in front of them uh, if it's a race. 
Okay, now we go to Cora, and she is going to uh, do a, she is not very strong, so she's just going to use her action to help the crewmate who's trying to push the boat, and so he'll have advantage when he pushes. Uh, but now Captain's dead, now it's your turn. Okay, I am going to, uh, the, the other lackeys there behind me some distance, yeah, they're kind of like, they're like to your left about like 30 feet. Uh, and they're okay. like full running towards the boat. Uh, Cora herself is about, uh, I would say 50 feet. Uh, or the woman in the cage. I always do that. Uh, the woman in the cage is over to the right about 50 feet. Uh, okay. I guess I'm just gonna run... Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna dash to the boat. Okay. You just start running. Uh, you get the and you get to the boat and you like hit the thing and you hear Cora kind of say, oh, "Took your damn sweet time." Uh, sorry, sorry. She I... Is like pushing up against it. Uh, now it is uh, the crew's turn. So first of all, it's we're gonna do uh, you guys pushing it. So uh, the dude's gonna roll with advantage. Hey, oh wow, rolled an 18 with advantage. So. Uh, and like plus two. So we just like, he's able to like push it and able to get it off the sand. And like, now it's starting to like go into the water a bit. Uh, and you guys can on your turn, climb into it. Uh, however, uh, the rest of the crew are going to get at least within javelin range okay. uh, or, or hand axe. They all have hand axes and they're just gonna, each one is going to throw a hand axe at you guys. So uh, two for each of you. So two for the one crew guy. Ooh, that's gonna hit. Uh, is that gonna hit? This could be, you could just die. <laughs> That's going to hit too. Oh my God. Uh, all right. Well, let's see how this guy goes. <laughs> wow. Throws it. Axe, two axes into his back. You see him kind of like <laughs> cough out blood and just <laughs> into the water. Um, that's a violent end. Uh, two for Cora. Or the woman from the cage, uh, miss, and that one is going to hit. Um, hits core, like one just kind of like just like nicks Cora's uh, shoulder, and just, uh, you see her grunt. Uh, and then two for you. What your armor class? It's a fourteen. Fourteen. One hits. The other one's a crit fail. Uh, so that guy just like wipes out and like eats it uh, and misses. That's the consequence for him. Uh, the other one though is gonna hit you. Uh, uh, you take six points. Of, six points? It's a D6 and he rolled a six. So like an, an ax like gets you square. Okay, that's like wedged into my shoulder blade. Uh, <laughs> I can barely stand. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh my God. Um, all right. That's uh, their turn. Cora. Cora sees you and she jumps into the boat and puts her hand out to you um, to like give you help to get up on your turn. Um, the captain's dead. It is your turn now. I'm going uh, to grab her hand. She, the boat. She's not very strong, but she does her best to kind of leverage you up into the boat. And the boat's now kind of like a good a few feet out into the water. Uh, I can these tell guys... you I, I fall flat into the boat. <laughs> Just duck, uh, which is a great time because you both kind of like take a duck down behind the uh, the tail of the longship. Uh, is, there, is there someone within 30? Was that my action to get into the boat? Uh, no, I said it's your movement since she was helping you. Is there someone within 30 feet? Yes, there's there's one person who's just made it in 30 feet of you. Uh, and trying to compress the bleeding, I'm going to turn towards whoever's within 30 feet and just sort of bare my teeth at them. And with that crackling ozone, uh, I'm going to cast the cantrip infestation. Whoa, okay. Well, is that a save? Uh, it is a constitution saving throw, yes. Lit. Okay. Uh, what's your DC? Uh, it is my spell save DC is a 14. 14 fails, so it takes whatever damage. Okay, it is. they are going to take 1d6 of poison damage, that's six damage, and they have to move five feet in a random direction. I roll a d4 for the for the 
direction as this like cloud of mites and fleas and little like ticks start to swarm around. Scarabs from the mummy. The, done. Check. <laughs> Check. It's just scarab. Uh, he has to move five feet north of of his current position. Five feet north of his. So he he, he just immediately like bugs start just crawling all over him and just starts takes a hard left and just is like screaming, running up the coastline, just ah! and like then like is just like really close to death um so am i so am i (laughs) yeah um (laughs) okay uh and that's the crew's turn the uh four who are within range are gonna do one more volley um you guys are ducking behind so they're gonna um you're gonna be uh have half cover so you're gonna have plus five to your armor class two miss for cora uh what's your armor class now with a plus five, that's a 19. Not miss. Miss. So, like, they just like tink, tink, and like glance off the tail of the ship. And you guys know, like, going off into the water. Um, that is, they get kind of like to the shore and they kind of realize that you're too far out for them to really catch up with you. Um, now it's, I'm gonna do one more round. Uh, Cora then l- looks around and she like reaches up and like climbs the mast. And pulls like pulls down a rope, which unfurls the uh, sail, and you guys just like start to go a little bit faster. Um, and she just yells like, "She's like, uh, man the rudder." Ah, uh, rudder, yes, yes, I I man the rudder. Um, and you guys just kind of off into the distance. Uh, <gasps> as you guys kind of like, she, she, she like like. Um, uh, move us north. North. Uh, yes, north. Um, have I done this before on a boat with a rudder? You can kind of, like, you kind of know the idea of a rudder, because outriggers also use rudder-like right. things, so you just, like, you kind of look around for, like, what the rudder is, and it's just, like, little, basically, lever on the side of the boat, and you're able to kind of, like, move, like, grab her and move her around as you still have an axe in your back. Yeah. Uh, and you hear kind of, like, yell off, and I go... No. All right, tie it off. Okay. It's yes. Tie it so the rudder can stay in one spot. Right. Yes. Uh, tie it off. Of course. Of course. Uh, and I will do so to the best right. of my ability. You you do it like, and I'm gonna say you, you know ropes. You're able to do it. Uh, and the ship thing, as you get out a little bit more towards the coastline, turns up north and starts sailing north. Uh, she takes a second, like sits down on like one of the benches and takes a breath. <sighs> Um, uh, excuse me, um, I don't think I caught your name. Um, my name's Cora, uh, Cora Thornton. Cora Cora Thornton, um, yes, well, it is a, uh, it is good to meet you, Cora Thornton. My name is Callias. Um, I don't suppose you would have any poultices or herbs on hand that are good for closing a wound you see her kind of go uh, um i could maybe take a look at it i uh i don't have the the greatest uh, knowledge but um let me let me take a look at it and she's turn around ah. uh, she as she turn around she like sees the actual oh oh well here we go and like she like she's like i'm gonna take it on three okay one to rips it out, no! um, and then like quickly, quickly then like like takes like uh, some like first aid that's in the boat, patches it up, um, and she's like, hey, "You're gonna need some kind of uh, healing. Uh, I can keep it from being infected, but I'm I'm no good at stitches. That's uh, more of my uh, brother's uh, like expertise. Right. Um, um, but we can f- we go ahead. How far?" Is your brother? I where where are we going? In fact, um. Well, we're heading north, and so, I mean, back to Camden Mesa. Do you are you aware of where that is? Uh is it on the island? You say that, and she goes, like a, like a the kind of a realization comes over her. She goes, oh. Um, no, it's, um, 
Uh, have you only lived on your the islands your whole life? Is it bad if, if I have? No, 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 no. Uh, uh, just, uh, it's going to be really different. And uh, I'm going to help you out, okay? Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Um, um, but uh, let me, I can, I can mix uh, some kind of herbal thing to, I'll figure something out. I knew know a little bit for my brother uh, to keep that from getting infected. But, um, where like, is are you on like a village in those islands? As she like starts to like go through some like the crates that are in there and like find like these bits of like moss and stuff and starts to chew on them. Ah, uh, you could say so. Yes, a village of sorts, though not anymore. I don't think. What do you mean by that? I, I mean, and I'm just sort of going to take a moment and pull my hood a little tighter around my shoulders and further over my head. I mean, it is time to, to have left there long since, I think, yes? Mm. Yeah. Strike out in the world, do your own thing. I get it. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, you seem to handle yourself pretty well in a fight. Is that something you'd be interested in doing? Kind of. Uh, I am working that. Well, I, I am a hunter by trade, and those skills, I suppose, are useful instincts and whatnot. Um, the rest, I am. Um, it is new. It is new to me, so perhaps, perhaps yes. If, was that good, you think? I mean, it, we're cl it was close, but we're alive and that's better than some. <laughs> um, and you see her kind of like, like there's a Nick and she like takes a bit of the, the uh, like kind of algae chew that she's chewing on and like sticks it in her wound and then puts a bandage over it and wraps it around. Uh, it ties it off uh, and takes the rest and like, she's like, this is gonna sting a bit and puts it in yours. Uh, <clears throat> um, you, you, you are a fighter, it would seem, yes? Out of necessity, yeah. Um, it's not necessarily my main trade, but I, I've figured out something that works for me, yeah. What did you... I have seen magics, but I have never seen, ne never seen anything like what you did. Just some parlor trick. I, uh, I know how to do nothing too, too crazy about that. <laughs> if only we all knew such tricks. Yeah, well, it seems that you know your way around some tricks as well. I saw that big bolt of whatever the hell you shot. That was, that was cool. <laughs> you, you know about as much of it as I do now. Yeah. Uh, mine, mine is kind of new as well. So I'm assuming yours is new to you. Yes. Quite. Gotcha. Quite. Well, um, Callias, uh, I, uh, we don't have a lot back at Camden Mesa, but me and my brother have at least a roof over our heads and we'd be, if you're willing to help us or be willing to help you and maybe we can work something out. Yes, though I ask one favor, perhaps. Uh, well, what's the favor? Might I have my own place to sleep? Like a room? A, a room if there is such to be had, but uh, simply space that is my own will, will do. And it kind of thinks for a second, she goes, yeah, yeah, I think we have a spot, yeah. Sure thing, it's it's a, it's, it's a good enough, enough space for multiple people, so. Um, good. And if not, we have, we can maybe find you a room to stay somewhere cheap, rent a room. No, no, no trouble is necessary, just as long as there is somewhere I can 
be just me. Mm-hmm. Well, as, as far as I see it, Callias, you are the reason I'm not stuck in a cage and probably dead. So I owe you and uh, we'll say we owe each other. How about that? I would have said even, but I will take that. Uh, this is more fun. She kind of <laughs> smiles at you. I'll sort of like smile back in a way that I don't think I expected. She just kind of nods and goes, all right, well, I'm fucking hungry, so I'm going to let's find some food in here. How about that? Uh, it should take yes. a, God, a few days to get to all the way up the coast, so we got to take stock of our provisions and we'll uh, get there, and then we'll have to go from the port town to Camden Mesa itself, so there's a little bit of travel ahead of us, but uh, I'm happy to have a companion. Yeah, I know it enough. Um, so, thank you, uh, Goliath. Well, thank you. Yeah. Truly. Uh, let's see how this, whatever, and like kind of looks at you and like whatever this is goes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We will see how yeah. it goes. I think at this point, I'm probably just going to like kind of look behind me for a moment and just watch Vimata and the rest of the islands begin to fade. Really, I've never seen them from this angle. They look very small as you get further and further away. But the dark, the dark cloud of the monsoon hangs further south over them as you head north and the camera pans up (laughs) origin story complete (laughs) um and that will complete yours will uh awesome holy shit that was great that was a great session yeah yeah that was a lot of fun uh okay Uh, well everybody uh tune in next week for our next set of one-offs we'll have three this time so probably a little bit of a longer session uh we the order will be uh uh, drew uh then kyle playing his character and then hannah will be our caboose bring it in um for next week uh so hey thank you all for hanging out with us and watching the stream and uh before you go please once again word of mouth that's the best way to uh, get people to hear about us, listen to us, so you think they'd be into it, or if they want to like listen or watch D and D, please send them our way. We'd l- or love to answer any questions or anything. So follow us on the, all the socials, and we love you guys. Thank you so much for listening and watching. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, see you guys next week. See ya. Love y'all. <laughs>